everyone, and welcome to South Kitsap High School in Joe Knowles Field. This is Darren Bowden coming to you at uh, Joe Knowles Field as we are ready for the kickoff of the 2006 high school football season. And joining me in the booth tonight uh, is going to be my cohort, my faithful trusty assistant and color man, Mr. David Rodriguez. D-Rod, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me, DB, in the booth, and it's uh, good to be back for another exciting season with SK Basketball. Uh, right now, we're getting ready for the uh, National Anthem uh, with the famous South Kitsap Marching Band on the field ready to perform and the NJROTC uh, marching with the flag out onto the field. And players and fans are all standing uh, ready for the National Anthem, and we'd like to present that now. That was the South Kitsap High School marching band with the national anthem, and as always, a very good job. What a beautiful night for football. It uh, has been in the uh, mid-80s today. This whole weekend is supposed to be a beautiful weekend, and it's going to carry through to tonight's football game. Uh, South Kitsap opening up tonight against the Kentwood Conquerors. Kentwood is coming out of the SPSL, the South, Th South Puget Sound League, and uh, there's been a lot of changes since the reclassification of uh, many high schools uh, th across the state. They're in the North SPSL North Division, and they will be playing uh, some same schools and some different schools. Uh, Decatur, Federal Way, Kent Meridian, Kent Lake, Kent Ridge, uh, Tahoma, Thomas Jefferson, and Kentwood is the final school in that division. Uh, also, South Kitsap is in a, in a new division in the Narrows League, and what are the teams in that division, DB? The Narrows League lost five teams. Shelton, Bremerton, Olympic, Port Angeles, and Capital all dropped to the 3A classification. And uh, we go back to what some people consider the old Narrows League. Uh, South Kitsap, Gig Harbor, Lincoln, Wilson, and Foss in the Bridge Division. Central Kitsap, North Kitsap, Bellarmine, Mount Tahoma Stadium, and Olympia in the Bay Division as we are getting ready to kick off. Kentwood won the uh, won the coin toss. South Kitsap is going to kick off to Kentwood. Uh, doing the kicking tonight His for South Kitsap is going to be number 27, Quincy Lyman. Back deep to receive uh, for Kentwood, number 36, Darius Coleman. And, and we're uh, checking with our number staff. 30, number 32. That's number 32, Vinny Fuoco as uh, the 2006 high school season is about to get underway. It's a short little kick. It's going to be fielded on the 22-yard line by Kentwood. Not a whole lot of running room that's, being such a short kick. That's number 37, Colton Hiles, a senior, uh, with the, the catch and run after the kickoff. And they're up at about the 35-yard line to start the game, about the 34. South and Kitsap returning a, a numerous amount of players, both offensively and defensively. And one of the stars for South Kitsap on defense is number 62, Renard Williams. Renard Williams weighs in at over 300 and uh, 
preseason experts are predicting him to have a very good season. In at quarterback for Kentwood is number seven, Kevin Warner. The fullback is Jordan Johnson, and the running backs uh, are multiple as uh, a man goes in motion for the Kentwood to the far side of the field. As they fake, they no, they do. They hand the ball. There's and a bubble, and it looks like South Kitsap is going to recover it. The first play of the game, it could be, or no, they're calling it down. It looked like they had fumbled the ball. I believe there was a fumble on the play by Kentwood, a little miscommunication on the handoff there between uh, the between Warner and the running back, but Kentwood recovers it, and luckily for them, they actually gained two yards on the play, and it'll be second and eight. Looked like a little delayed option, which was busted at the line by the South Kitsap defense. They were ready for anything and everything, and they got right in the middle of the mix, forced a fumble, almost recovered it. It's gonna be second down for Kentwood, at about the 35. They actually gained about a yard on the play. Usually the first game of the season for many sports. A lot of jitters for both sides as uh, it showed right there. As uh, they come out in the I formation, the running back is Demetrius Bronson. Warner under center. They have a uh, split slot to the left. And they're going to throw a little pass out to Demetrius. Uh, nice uh, to Bronson. He made the catch, but a nice defensive tackle there by the Wolves, and it's going to be a loss on the play of about a yard. It'll be third and long for Kentwood. That'll be Corey Dame, number 13, with the tackle on the play. And a nice defensive effort here, forcing third down for the Conquerors. And South Kitsap's defense looks keyed up and ready to go today. So Kentwood with a third and long. Uh, on the 30, on their own 34-yard line, as they hurry up to the line of scrimmage, they're still in a night formation. They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson. He's off on a little counter, but he's met there by that was uh, Chad Tester, the 6'1", 190 junior for South Kitsap. It's going to be somewhat close to first down, but I don't think he made it. It will be fourth down. So a nice defensive series there by the Wolves to stop Kentwood on their first drive. Really looked like South Kitsap's D was totally ready to go. Uh, probably good thing for the defense to be first on the field. As you said, DB, the uh, first game jitters, uh, give it to the offense. Let them bobble the ball around. Uh, they're going to be punting the ball on fourth down here to South Kitsap. Back deep to receive the the. Uh, in this punting formation, Sean Staten for South Kitsap. Uh, and it's going to be fielded by Staten at the 15-yard line. He gets up to the 25. He sees an opening. He gets off to the right. Nice job by, that's a nice job by Staten. A return of 20 yards. And South Kitsap will have the ball at their own 35-yard line as the offensive unit is huddling up right in front of South Kitsap's head football coach, D.J. Sigurdsson, and we'll see how the Wolves do on their first offensive series. Uh, Chip Pearson, a uh, senior quarterback, will be leading the charge for the South Kitsap Wolves. He is uh, six foot 157, uh, number 10, taking snaps behind center. David Parker uh, at wide receiver, split to the far side of the field. Brandon Mayfield on the near side. They are in an I formation. They're going to hand the ball off to the fullback. Drives his feet forward. Nice little run there. Straight up front. That's number 41, Stephen Tucker. That's a nice uh, pickup of seven yards on the first play. Right up the gut. Typical South Kitsap football. South Kitsap usually very strong in the running game. And they gain six yards on the play. It's going to be second and four for the Wolves. The, uh, the fullback, actually that was Corey Hawkins, the fullback at tailback, uh, is Stephen Tucker. It's going to be second short. Pearson hands the ball off to, oh, and he's taking it down in the backfield. There was no gain on that play by Tucker as uh, the defensive line, that was number 71, Justin Janae for Kentwood, and he was right there, and he closed the door. And uh, I think they, there was no gain, and it's going to be third and four for the Wolves. So far, we've got uh, David Parker, number 81, lining up on the right side for a uh, receiver, and on the near side, the left side, uh, we've got number nine, uh, Brandon Mayfield lining up for the Wolves, the junior. South Kitsap in the I formation. Look for maybe a, a short play action pass. Pearson the short step and he's got his man. He's got Parker on the outside and he's going to have enough for the first down. Uh, nice pass and catch play. Uh, Pearson to Parker and the ball is going to be downed at the South Kitsap 49 yard line near midfield where South Kitsap will have, actually we'll call it the 48. South Kitsap will have another first and 10. Well, uh, Kentwood's defense giving uh, the receivers of South Kitsap plenty of room there on the, on the edges. 
And uh, Chip Pearson, uh, with his first pass of the season, looked pretty sharp there on that delivery to 81, David Parker, a senior. 39, DeAndre Jackson in, and they hand the ball off to Tucker. He bounces out to the outside. He stiffs arm his man, but he's taking him down at the 50-yard line. Nice tackle there by number seven, Kevin Warner, who's also the quarterback, so playing uh, both ways here today. Uh, but uh, nice tackle. It's going to be a gain of about two yards. Uh, at midfield, and it will be second eight for the Wolves. So uh, South gets up sticking with that traditional running game so far early in this contest. Stephen Tucker, the running back, uh, giving a stiff arm out there, but uh, the quarterback, as you mentioned, DB, for Kentwood in there on the tackle, ready for anything. Into the game now, number 24, Chad Fowler split to the far side of the field in the slot, and they're going to throw it to him, almost intercepted. They're going to set off a little screen. He bounces out to the outside. Nice open field tackle, though, by number 89, Nick Zagrafis. And uh, number four, Clarence Mitsaka, also in the tackle. They do a good job of uh, reading the defense and picking it up, but uh, South Kitsap just kind of chipping away at it here as uh, Pearson is looking over at the sidelines for the next call. Number 19, uh, Jesse Galligan comes into the game for the, for the Wolves at tight end, and it will be third and five for the Wolves. So uh, the Wolves uh, mixing it up a little bit here with the run and the pass and being very successful so far on the pass. Well, you know, they should mix it up. I think they have a, a, a diverse offense. They, they can do the things they want to do with their offense. Pearson hands the ball off to Fowler. That's number 39. Uh, excuse me, DeAndre Jackson. And uh, they're going to be very close to a first down here. We'll have to wait and see where they spot the ball. It looked like he uh, successfully lunged forward there for a first down. It's going to be really close. We might have to measure. They're going to stop the. They're going to stop play here for just a moment. An official's timeout as they will bring the chains out to. Uh, measure. If they're short this early in the season, this early in the game, DB, do you go for it or do you simply punt the ball away? Uh, I think that with uh, the series that they had earlier, uh, doing a nice job defensively against Kentwood, I, I say that you go for it. But uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I know that the uh, South Kitsap High School coaching staff uh, will do the, uh, the smart thing. Uh, it's an excellent coaching staff. The head coach, DJ Sigurdsson, assisted by Eric Canton, Joey Dame, Ron Ness, Jim Fairweather, Adam Knaus uh, back on staff this year. Ed Pearson and Dustin Booth. Now for the chain gang with Seth and Al Posey and also helping out uh, Don Morgan. Longtime chain gang runners on the sidelines of South Kitsap football. So it's going to be fourth down and inches for the Wolves at the Kentwood 48 yard line. South Kitsap is going with the power eye formation. Tucker is the tailback. He's got a couple of big blockers in front of him. They're going to hand the ball off to Tucker, and he's got a big opening. He stays on his feet, and he's, he's, down, going. And he's, he's not going to be taken down. He was tripped up by his own man, and there's going to be a penalty flag come in, and I think that's going to be a face mask against Kentwood. Boy, he just got through that line. They were crowded up in the middle waiting for the quarterback sneak. He bounced off tackle right and busted a play down the field for a first down. And I think you're right, DB. That's going to be a face mask. It was all him. He ran into his own player. He was, he was going. And it is. That's going to be a face mask penalty against Kentwood. It happened on about the 19-yard line, so it's going to be probably half the distance to the goal line. Ball was on the 40, uh, the 48-yard line of Kentwood, and they got it down to the 19, and they're going to move that up probably half the distance, tacked onto it, and the ball is going to be placed on the just inside the 15-yard line. And so the Wolves are in prime time position here, uh, going with the power eye formation. The sun is really coming into the left side of the offensive players, so look for the quarterback to hand off or throw right. Hawkins and Burlingame. Pearson, he fakes. Nice catch. And he's going to be wide open. Corey Hawkins, touchdown, South Kitsap. Chip Pearson, a 15-yard touchdown pass to Corey Hawkins in the flat, and the Wolves get on the board here on their first series of play. Rolled out right and found number four, Corey Hawkins, wide open for the TD scamper into the SK end zone. Six nothing Wolves with the extra point coming up. That was a great pass play started by a fake from Chip Pearson. They, hand, they faked the handoff in the power eye and he rolled to his right and Corey Hawkins was wide open in the flat and he made the nice catch and danced into the end zone untouched as uh, Lyman has come out now for the point after touchdown attempt. 
They're set in formation. There's the snap, the kick is up, and it is good. And the South Kitsap Wolves with 6.23 left in the first quarter lead the Kitwood Conquerors 7 to nothing. And uh, that was a great series, a great offensive series by South Kitsap to control the ball early in this game. Well, a lot of questions about whether or not Chip Pearson, the quarterback, and the rest of the SK offense would be able to produce early on, very early on this season. The first couple minutes of the game, they've proven that they can put points on the board, they can get down the field, uh, making Kentwood uh, scratch their heads a little bit here in the early going. If you go down 7 nothing this early, if you've already had the ball, it's not good, you know, not a good sign. Uh, Kentwood needs to come out here and at least show some offensive uh, dexterity, otherwise the Wolves might just decide they want to roll over right here in the first quarter. But don't count Kentwood out there, one great football team. Uh, Kentwood winning the Class 4A state championship uh, a couple of years ago. They've developed quite a program there at Kentwood, uh, always producing some excellent athletes. And uh, But uh, good to see the Wolves get on the board early as a uh, new quarterback for the Wolves this year. Chip Pearson does an excellent job of leading the Wolves down the field to an early 15-yard uh, touchdown pass to Corey Hawkins' score as Lyman's going to kick it Better short kick again. It's going to be fielded at about the 20-yard line by Kentwood. Not much of a return on the play. It was fielded by Jordan Johnson, the 5'10 senior for Kentwood, and about a 5-yard, or about a 10-yard return, and Kentwood will start their second series of play at their own 30-yard line. In on the tackle there for the Wolves, number 24, Chad Fowler, a senior. <laughs> Helping out on special teams any way he can. Carrying the ball and also ta making tackles. Number 24, Chad Fowler. The South, South Kitsap Wolf, Wolf defense back out on the field. Make sure to keep an eye on number 62, Renard Williams. And with that defense on the field, it keeps that offensive, uh, that offensive unit rested. They're going to hand the ball off to the tailback. Spins him around, and there's nowhere to go as Renard Williams leads a large group of Wolves, and they tackle him at the 30-yard line. We're going to call maybe a half-yard gain on the play. It's going to be second long for the Wolves. So, so far, South Kitsap doing a nice job defensively here. Off tackle left. Had no chance. The Wolves defense sniffed it out and immediately tackled the ball carrier. At least four Wolves tacklers there on, on the stop. Demetrius Johnson, the tailback for the Conquerors, has not been able to find an opening yet, but uh, like we said, there's a lot of time left here. And uh, the, But the Wolves uh, seem to be doing very very well early on in this contest as they have split wide receivers and again uh, Demetrius Johnson is the tailback number 45 Colton Sisson is the tailback they're gonna they know they do hand it off and it's the the tailback or excuse me the fullback is hit head on that was number 39 DeAndre Jackson who met him right there uh, looked like an option play they handed the ball off to the fullback not much on the on the play it's gonna be third and five for the Conquerors well, DeAndre a little lighter than the uh, fullback for the Conquerors. He got knocked back a few yards, but the key was that he stopped the runner and allowed the other Wolf tacklers to come in and help make a stop on the play. Kentwood looking to do something here with just under five minutes remaining now in the first quarter. The Wolves up 7-0 as they send uh, a slot wide receiver to the left side, still in the I formation. Warner... Reading the defense, they're going to pitch the ball off to the tailback, and he is going to get across there. Nice run there by Bronson, and he's going to get a big run of about eight yards on the play, and that is something that the Conquerors were looking for. It's going to be first down for Kentwood near midfield. Kentwood got a huge block from an offensive tackle going left, uh, taking out uh, the right side of the South Kitsap defensive line. Bronson getting the brunt of the running duties here tonight. As, uh, the, oh, there looked like there was a little bit, a uh, sidesteps a play there. Uh, there was a little confusion in the background there by Warner, but uh, handed the ball off to Bronson again, and he gets a nice chunk of change right up the middle, right to midfield. It's going to be a gain of seven. It'll be second and three for Kentwood. So Kentwood kind of getting their feet wet now a little bit here and uh, kind of settling down. Well, we expected Kentwood to come out ready to play, and now they're showing that the first offensive series may have just been early game jitters, early season jitters, and got those out of the way. And now it looks like they're uh, they're rolling a little bit here. South Kitsap is going to have to roll up their sleeves on defense and uh, try to make some stops. 
Michael Adams and Ryan Patterson, uh, split wide receivers. They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson again, and he sidesteps his way up the middle, spins around, barrels over a couple of wolves, gained, and he gained a, a big, big, big run on that play. We're going to call it a gain of about 12 yards for Bronson, and it's going to be first down for Kentwood uh, in Wolf territory. So this is the Kentwood that we have that we have seen the last few years. Demetrius Bronson, number 30, a junior running back uh, with, at 5'10", but weighs in at 190 pounds, is a load, and uh, took several South Kitsap tacklers with him on the way to another first down for Kentwood. So Kentwood sticking with this running game, doing a fine job of it. Two wide receivers split to the left. Warner under center. Looked like a little movement. They send a man in motion to the near side. They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson. He's going to get a big cut. And he's going to try, and he does. He gets to the outside, and there's going to be a penalty flag. Bronson looks like he's going to head into the end zone, and he does. But it's all coming back. There is a penalty flag back at the 35-yard line, and I believe it's going to be... Uh, a hold against Kentwood, and yes, it's all coming back. I noticed, uh, especially on that play, Coach, there was a lot of busy hands on uh, South Kitsap defensive line players, and uh, Brandon Mayfield, number nine, a victim of another uh, vicious block from the Kentwood offensive li uh, line. Um, Bronson stirring around to the right side and had to have a little extra help. Uh, officials call holding, and it comes back. Jordan Johnson went in motion to the near side of the field for Kentwood and sealed off a nice block on the inside. But when Bronson tried to get to the outside and cut up a little bit, uh, there was the hold from Kentwood. So a uh, costly penalty right there for Kentwood that takes away a touchdown and scoots Kentwood back uh, to the South Kitsap 44-yard line. So a big penalty right there prevents Kentwood from getting into the end zone. It's going to be first and forever for Kentwood as they send two wide receivers to the near side of the field. Bronson still at tailback. Warner, ready, takes it, gonna pit, fake the pitch, he's gonna roll out to his left, he's being chased, he's got his tight end open, and nice, ta oh, nice hit. That was a nice hit from Chad Fowler, looked like he was gonna take down the tight end, Tyler Weinbreck, but uh, Weinbreck did a good job of not going down right away, and uh, they pick up a little bit on the on that uh, to get back what they had lost from the penalty and it's going to be second and six for Kentwood in Wolf territory. We're going to spot the ball about the 34 yard line of South Kitsap. Fowler uh, put a nice pop on the receiver there. Just didn't wrap up and he got away, scurried up for about another six, seven yards. It's going to be, like you said, DB is second and six. Weinbrecht, a big kid. 6'2", 210, as they're going to hand the ball off to Bronson, and he's going to look for it, and he's taken down. Nice tackle by Chad Tester. But again, a penalty flags flying on the field, and I believe it's going to be against Kentwood again. It could have been illegal procedure uh, against Kentwood. The officials are meeting around the 35. Uh, illegal, uh, an illegal motion against Kentwood. So a uh, couple of penalties costly here for Kentwood, and... Uh, the Kentwood coach, Rex Norris, can't be happy with what he's seeing here with all these penalties. Uh, no, he can't be. It's uh, really a sign of uh, offensive, not necessarily immaturity, but early on in the season, like we said earlier, not necessarily jitters, but uh, cohesiveness at this point of the season. Uh, Kentwood's going to really have to look to eliminate these penalties or they're going to be setting themselves back. Right now, the running game is dominating the game, and they're marching, trying to score... Uh, retaliatory touchdown against the Wolves to even this game up. And South Kitsap is really going to have to start to possibly maybe communicating a little bit better with each other about the about the, the uh, runners and the pass receivers because it seems like they're getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one plays without a lot of extra help. Nicole Taylor and Ryan Patterson are in at wide receiver for Kentwood as uh, there's a little conference here at the 35 by the officials. Uh, we're not sure what they're doing. Then There they go. Now they're going to move the ball back. Um, it's going to be placed at the South Kitsap 39-yard line as uh, they finally have everything down here. So he's second and 10. So Warner is ready to go here. Second and 10 for the Conquerors. He's going to fake the handoff, and he looks to pass. He's taken down from the high. Nice tackle. That's number 35, Matt Mays, the six-foot junior 
came storming in from behind. Kentwood running the option play there. Warner decided to keep it, and he was taken down from behind. South Kitsap defense doing a very good job of snipping out these plays that Kentwood's trying to run. Kentwood doing really well with the straight running game. Anytime they do anything different, it seems like the Wolves are ready and pouncing on whatever they have to throw at them. South Kitsap with a big defensive stop, scooting the Conquerors back another five yards. It's going to be third and 15 from the South Kitsap 45 yard line as they now have three wide receivers. Warner is in the shotgun. Cover defense by the Wolves, looking for the pass. He's going to, ro Warner rolls out to his left. He's looking downfield, he's being chased by Williams and he goes on the outstretch. Now he's going back to his right, changing directions. He's got a man and he's gonna be taken down. Nice tackle there, but it's number 38 for the Wolves. A loss of 10 yards on the play. It's gonna be fourth and 25 for the Kenwood Conquerors, a host of Wolf linemen and tacklers ready for the quarterback, scrambling around. Not able to get the ball off. They take him down. That's got to hurt for the Kentwood, Kentwood offense. I believe that was Matt Mays again. Number 35 for the Wolves. Did an excellent job. And back to do the punting would be Jacob Stanley for Kentwood. Two Wolves back to receive. As uh, the kick is up, it's a nice kick. It's going to be fielded at the 15-yard line. A couple of nice blocks, and he's got some room. Taken down by number 18, excellent tackle, Joe Angevine. I think they're gonna call a late hit on Kenwood. I think a little extra activity after the tackle. And we'll see what the officials have to say about this. It looked like it happened after the ball was down and the whistle had blown. Sean Staten for the Wolves receiving. There's going to be an illegal block in the back on the Wolves. So instead of having the ball at the 30 yard line, they're going to tack on a big penalty here that, and the Wolves will be back a little bit farther. That happening after the whistle was blown and the ball is down suggests a little uh, too aggressive, little extra play there after, after the play, something the Wolves will have to watch out for. Now they have a penalty to set them back with uh, 31 seconds left in the first quarter here at Joe Knowles. And that is usually one big determining factor in a football game, having turnovers and penalties that could decide the outcome and uh, the Conquerors showing some turnovers here, and the Wolves getting uh, a turnover here themselves. So scoot them back 10 yards. The Wolves will start at their own 20-yard line, and we'll see how they handle their second series of plays as the Wolves are going to come out in the power eye formation. Burling game and Hawkins are in at fullback. Tucker is going to take the handoff, and he's going nowhere, and he fumbles the ball, and it's going to be recovered by South Kitsap again, I guess. I, think I believe that's it's recovered by South Kitsap, yes. Yes, he is. Boy, uh, he just did not have uh, control of that ball. It looked like an ice cube there in his hands, and he just couldn't keep uh, keep control of it. It slipped out, and boy, it was up for grabs. A nice surge by the Kentwood defensive line, and Tucker had nowhere to go, and he got stood up, and uh, the ball came loose, but luckily the Wolves recovered their own fumble at the 20-yard line for a gain of nothing, and that is going to be the end of the first quarter, and South Kitsap leads Kentwood 7-0 here in the opening game of the 2006 high school football season. And so far, D-Rod, we really got to like what South Kitsap is throwing at us. Yeah, they, uh, the offense looks uh, very uh, very much ready to go. Uh, marched down the field the first time through, scored a touchdown, no problems for them. Kentwood offense is giving the Wolf defense fits at this point. However, Kentwood unable to score, unable to get a first down in the Wolf territory, uh, getting a great play on third down and uh, forcing the punt, and uh, the Wolves get the ball back. Uh, the Kentwood coaches uh, might be pulling their hair out at this point since their offense does look so good, especially on the ground, but the penalties um, are keeping them from doing what they want to do on offense. South Kitsap defense looks very good, uh, and we'll see what they can do deep in uh, their own territory to try to march the ball down the field. Well, as we said at the beginning of this broadcast, uh, South Kitsap returning quite a few players uh, with a lot of experience and a lot of really good players. Uh, many of the uh, members of this current football team work very hard in the offseason uh, with the weights, with the excellent weight program that we have here at South Kitsap and uh, camps and so forth. And uh, South Kitsap, I believe, is going to be a force to reckon with this year. So we're really looking for some big things from South Kitsap this year. And uh, I think that they'll be able to fill the shoes with a great coaching staff and a great 
great football team. So we are about ready to get started here in the second quarter of play as a little bit of sunshine is kind of peeking through on the field here as uh, they're going to pitch the ball back to the tailback. And that is going to be, uh, that's number 24, Chad Fowler, uh, who uh, we're giving, they're giving uh, Stephen Tucker a little breather here. Fowler, uh, who played quite a bit last year at, at tailback, the 5'8", 161 pound senior uh, in at running back. So uh, South Kitsap will throw a couple of running backs at Kentwood's way. Number 74, Hunter Blackmore there to make the initial stop, a sophomore for Kentwood, 6'3", 225. Uh, the big man there on the left side of the line for uh, Kentwood. So South Kitsap uh, with the first play from scrimmage in the second quarter, uh, a run, a sweep to the right, and uh, they lost uh, they lost about three yards on the play, and it's going to be third and long for the Wolves as Pearson reading the defense here. They've got three wide receivers, and there's a fumble on the snap. Pearson is able to pick it up, and he is... Uh, Look, looked like a short snap, not all the way, didn't get all the way to his hands, and uh, or wasn't quite ready for it. Either way, fumble on the play. Pearson luckily recovers it. Otherwise, Kenwood is in a pretty position to, to get the ball back at the Wolf 20-yard line. Uh, the Wolves' uh, offense sputtering a little bit here, DB. Deep in their own territory and almost a dangerous turnover as uh, South Kitsap will be uh, ready to do uh, some punting here from their own 20, or it looks like about their own 15-yard line. Uh, two Kentwood Conquerors back to receive the punt. The snap is good and the kick is going up. It's sort of a wobbly. It's going to be fielded just on inside midfield by Kentwood, and a nice tackle, bounces off, gets to the outside, but swarmed by a small pack of wolves. Number 43, Josh Burlingame, in there on the tackle, along with number 15, Robbie Johnson, taking down the, uh, the uh, punt receiver. One thing I'm noticing so far, DB, is the wolf tacklers maybe not wrapping up. They're getting to the ball, they're sniffing it out, they're just not wrapping up and taking those runners and receivers down like they should. And that's any coach's nightmare when the tackling doesn't get, uh, the, when, the, when the job doesn't get done because you have a great hit, but they don't tackle and wrap up. And uh, that happens throughout high school, college, and professional sports. So uh, it's something that they don't like to see as the Kentwood Conquerors will have the ball midfield. They're in the I formation, Warner under center. And it looks like a delay. They're going to hand the ball off. There's a new tailback, and they're going to get in there. Uh, a, tail, a new tailback there for... That's Corey Rodriguez, and he gets a huge gain on the play, a gain of about 14 yards for Kentwood as uh, they're they're giving Demetrius Bronson a little break here. I got so. we, at this point we have to give credit to the uh, Kentwood offensive line. The running game is nothing with the without the shrewdness of the offensive line. Number 72, a senior, Justin Shuey, the left guard for Kentwood, is really getting in on some plays and throwing some good blocks, creating some big holes around the uh, the outside of, of the line for those Kentwood runners. And we're going to have a brief stoppage of play here as uh, we have a South Kitsap man down on the far side of the field and uh, that is Josh Burlingame, uh, the 5'9 junior, as uh, he is on one knee, so it looks like he's okay. He might have gotten the wind knocked out of him or something, but uh, doesn't look like to be too serious as uh, Patrick Olson, uh, the, uh, the trainer, uh, one of our trainers here at South Kitsap High School, probably the best uh, athletic training facilities in the in the state, in my opinion, if I could get that little plug in there. And um, we have a new athletic uh, certified trainer that will be joining Patrick Olson in, in uh, this year's group, and that is Tara Lamping. So South Kitsap's athletic medicine, uh, always there on the sidelines. Well, there. they do have competitions for athletic training departments and uh, teams throughout the state for high school, and uh, South Kitsap has won uh, plenty in the last several years. And not only with the trainers, but the student trainers of Amanda Rickinson. Natalie Pea Pea, Nick Price, and Michelle Magelhaas. So uh, Burlingame seems to be okay. Maybe a little stinger there. Maybe lost, uh, got the wind knocked out of him. But uh, Burlingame is one tough kid, and he'll come back for sure. So Kentwood with a first down, and they're going to hand the ball off again and to Rodriguez, and he has spun around from behind, not going to get much on this play. Uh, he's only going to gain a couple. It's going to be second long for Kentwood. So South Kitsap doing a nice job of shutting down that running play. Well, Rodriguez uh, trying to, to, to get get around the side again, not quite able to do so. South Kitsap defense waiting. Maybe they're uh, a little bit 
A um, little bit rested after uh, the injury on the sideline. Uh, it's a little free timeout. Kentwood coming out with a no-huddle offense, trying to catch South Kitsap off guard. They send two wide receivers. Now a man goes in motion. Warner is going to fake the handoff, and he's going to keep it, and he's going to be taken down, but there's a penalty flag on the play, and that looks like it's going to be an illegal motion uh, against Kentwood, and I'm figuring that it's going to come back here. DeAndre Jackson again in on the tackle for South, and... The little keeper there for Kentwood not fooling him or the rest of the Wolves' defensive line. They are ready and waiting. Kentwood mixing it up a little bit here, like you said, DB, with the no huddle and uh, with the keepers and the running game. Um, not really looking to go uh, to go to the air so much here at the beginning. Maybe something they're saving for a little bit later, uh, catch a soft guard. Something, oh, South the, something South Kitsap Wolves will have to uh, look out for. South Kitts or Kentwood with the penalty here, and uh, they're going to scoot the ball back. It's going to be second long for Kentwood near their own, just on the inside uh, of their own 40-yard line. So another penalty here by Kentwood as um, there is just over nine, just almost nine minutes remaining here in the contest. South Kitsap still leading Kentwood 7-0 as Kentwood comes back out in the I formation, split or uh, two wide receivers to the right. Warner getting ready, looking over the defense, and he's going to pitch the ball again to Rodriguez, and he's going to try and get to the outside, and he gets a nice block, and he does, and he's taken outside. And right out at the first yardage marker, and he's going to gain a couple on the play. It's going to be third and long, so South Kitsap doing a nice job of snuffing that one out. Kenwood again throwing some big blocks for their own runners. Getting some isolation one-on-one. -on -one blocking situations and uh, creating some openings. More player changes here. Uh, number 45, Colton Sisson and Demetrius Bronson is now back into the game at tailback for Kentwood. Michael Adams split to the near side of the field as a wide receiver for Kentwood. Warner is going to fake the handoff and he's looking for a little screen pass. He's being chased and he's going to be oh, almost taken down. I can't believe he didn't take him down. But right there from behind is Brad Federson. Nice job by Matt Mays. He is all over the field tonight defensively, and he really had Warner taken down, but Warner held his balance. Well, uh, I, I, at the after he was almost taken down the first time, it looked like that he was a little uh, tired or beleaguered there, and Federson was just there to clean up the mess. Um, Warner looks maybe a little uh, distracted or uh, distraught by the fact that the South defensive line is able to get in so easily, it seems, uh, whenever he holds on to the ball. Corey Dame and Sean Staten back to receive the kick. And it's a good snap. The kick is up. It's a little wobbly off to the side. I don't think they're, then they're just going to let it go. Staten's just staying away from, from it. And they're going to let it roll. And it's going to be at the South Kitsap 10-yard line. So South Kitsap will have the ball deep in their own territory. But again, the Wolves doing a nice job on defense and stopping Kentwood. Nice punt by Kentwood to pin it back within uh, within the 10-yard line. Uh, didn't look very good at first, but uh, they were already pretty deep in our, well, not deep, but uh, on the other side of the 50-yard line in Wolf territory. So that little punt turns out to be a nice one, pins us back, uh, pins the Wolves back a little bit. We'll see how the Wolves' uh, offense can operate uh, with their uh, backs against the end zone here. Cassandra Martin and Brad Davis are the managers for the South Kitsap Wolves tonight. And they do a great job. As Stephen Tucker is now back in at tailback, Hawkins is at fullback. They're going to hand the, they're going to fake. Pearson's looking for his man, and he's got him downfield, and it's going to be underthrown and intercepted. It's going to be intercepted by Kentwood, and, and a penalty flag is coming back, and he's going to go in for the touchdown. We'll see that was that. number 89, Nick Zagrafis, but we'll have to wait and see what the penalty flag is. Pearson underthrew that pass by a, a good two steps, and uh, he was there waiting for the interception, the pick, and the return for the TD. We'll see about this penalty here, though, DB. I believe the penalty came after the interception. That's correct. So if it's, if it's against Kentwood, it'll come back, but Kentwood will have the ball. If it's not, it'll be touchdown Kentwood, and uh, we'll have the ensuing extra point and kickoff. Well, the touchdown will, will not count, and Kentwood is going to be driven back, but they do intercept the pass from Chip Pearson and uh, from South Kitsap, and they are going to have the ball in South Kitsap territory. We'll see if number seven, Kevin Warner, is ready to come back out on the field, maybe a little bit rested now, and uh, we'll see if they go to the air a little bit more. Uh, an unfortunate turnover for the Wolves. 
However, with their backs against the wall like that, maybe just as good as a punt. So South Kitsap with the turnover, the interception, and Kentwood is going to have the ball at the South Kitsap 34-yard line. So a big turnover there after the interception by South Kitsap, and Kentwood is going to have the ball again. Bronson is back in. They're going to have the, the split the split backs going in the shotgun with three wide receivers now for Kentwood. Nickel Taylor is in. Warner ready. They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson. He's going to take it. Taken down by Renard Williams. Nice tackle by Renard. Renard saying, not on my line. He threw him down with authority, bounced him off the ground. It looked like he spiked him in the end zone after a touchdown. That's 6'1", 3'11". That's pretty tough to get away from when he's got you in his grasp. So I don't necessarily want him grabbing me and throwing me to the ground. That was a nice tackle by Renard. Way to get in there. We'll call it a gain of one on the play as Kentwood stays in the shotgun formation, trying to spread South Kitsap out here. And hurry up the game with a no huddle. Just over seven minutes left in the first half. Warner looking over the defense here. He's going to take it, look for the, and he's got a man, and he's going down the left sideline, and he's got a man open, but he's going to overthrow him. The pass was intended for number 15, Nico Taylor, 5'9", junior for Kentwood, yeah. but the pass is incomplete. Joey Dame on the coverage, and it's going to be third and long for the Conquerors. The, uh, the receiver on that play uh, fell down. Uh, they, some people might say that could be pass interference, but uh, the ball was neither uh, within reach, and uh, the receiver's feet uh, became tangled up under him, and uh, he fell down. So no pass interference, none needed. It's going to be second, and it's going to be third down and about 12 for the Wolves, and I think Kentwood's going to take a timeout, and Kentwood is going to take a timeout. Well, I think Actually, they have enough. They just went no huddle. Now they huddle. Now they're going back to the play. We'll see if they have enough time to run the play. Kentwood was going with the no huddle, <laughs> and then they were just standing around, and we weren't sure what they were doing, and now I believe that they are. Well, there's an official's timeout so, here. Well, I, there, was a, there was a no huddle, then there, was a, then there was a wandering around, and then there was a huddle. And then there was, there was no huddle, and now there's an officials meeting. And that they have a huddle. And later on, I think we're just going to invite a bunch of people down for a big barbecue. Right, and that's going to be called the huddle. That's correct. And it's going to be good. The See, Kentwood Conquerors finally getting a chance to regroup and meet here and discuss their play. Not quite sure what the officials stopped the game for, but, well, they're in charge. Not only do they get great play calling up here, but uh, we like to throw in that great sense of humor, don't we, D-Rod? Absolutely. Barbecue. Kentwood third and long here from the South Kitsap 30, we'll call it the 33-yard line, as we're uh, not sure what we're waiting for here. Uh, it looks like there's a problem with the, with the clock, the official. The official is uh, looking to uh, put the, the right time up was on the clock, and they did. So uh, they had it listed at 6.03 and set 6.25 here in the first third half. And, third and 12 for the Conquerors. Warner, he's back straight, drop back. He's looking for a man, rolls to his right. He's going to be hit after he throws it. Oh, and the pass is caught. What a catch by number eight, Michael Adams. And he almost had the entire uh, upper hemisphere of his body taken off after that catch, but he... He's remained, well, I was looking down on the field here. Uh, he did an excellent job of catching the ball. Uh, he, his concentration was held intact and uh, made a nice catch. It's gonna be first down for Kentwood deep in South Kitsap territory. No, as no, South Kitsap's kind of scrambling a few players in here for substitution purposes. No, number 30 with the big block for Kentwood on the last play, the running back. They're gonna hand the ball off to Bronson. He gets, tries to cut it straight back up the middle. He bounces out to the right, cuts back to the inside and he's taken down by a couple of Wolves. That's uh, Tester and Mayfield, but they get inside the five yard line and it's going to be first and goal for Kentwood at about, we'll call it the four yard line. So Kentwood on the verge of getting into the end zone here. The South Kitsap defense really gonna have to step up here and stand up these Kentwood conquerors. They are looking to score. South Kitsap's gonna try to knock it back on their heels a little bit, keep them out of the end zone. The big fullback, number 45, Colton Sisson. They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson. He barrels his way up the middle. Touchdown, he Kentwood. Does. He gets into the end zone for a touchdown. So Kentwood gets on the board here with a three-yard touchdown run from Demetrius Bronson. Well, it seemed like it was just waiting to happen. The ball was being kicked and, and turned over around back in the in Wolf territory. And it seemed a matter of time before Kentwood was going to eventually be able to break off a big play like they did there with that 25-yard gain pass and finally get the ball in the end zone for a touchdown on first down inside the five. 
So Kentwood, after the turnover from South Kitsap, maintains possession and gets into the end zone. Number 66. They are waiting. There's a, going to be a penalty flag on the play, and it's going to be offsides against South Kitsap during the extra point. Number 66, Adam Smith doing the place kicking for Kentwood. He's a junior, listed as an offensive lineman. That's going to be one hefty kicker. I would hate to be the ball when I get struck by that foot. I wouldn't want to be that ball. And he will be striking it here soon for the extra point attempt. We'll see if he can punch it through. So Smith with the extra point, the kick is up and it is good. So Kentwood gets on the board here, a three yard touchdown run by Demetrius Bronson. And the score is tied here with 5.35 remaining in the first half at seven. And uh, this is the kind of game that we really did expect though between Kentwood and South Kitsap for the start of the season. Yeah, you know, relatively low scoring. Uh, back and forth, the defensive, uh, defensively dominated. Uh, both teams have only scored one touchdown in about you know 17 minutes uh, of play so far. Almost 20 minutes of play, and South Kitsap really defensively doesn't look bad. They really have only given up one touchdown, same as Kenwood. We just scored ours. We just scored uh, South Kitsap just scored theirs a lot quicker, and uh, this. Kentwood touchdown was a result of, a, like I said, a lot of back and forth play in, in SK territory. And they finally managed to get a score on the board. South Kitsap's defense looks good. They, they, they're young and they bring back some experience, but they're still young and Kentwood showing a lot of resolve here, able to uh, move the ball up and down the field. Chad Fowler and Corey Dame are deep to receive the kickoff from Smith as Kentwood, the ball is placed at the 40 yard line. Smith still doing the kicking duties and he's ready to go and he's going to go right down the middle. It's going to be taken by Corey Dame at the 10 yard line. Corey Dame gets a nice wall and he's looking to dance around and he kind of sidesteps, spins around and he makes his way up to about the 32 yard line and a late penalty flag comes in. And I think that's going to be a late hit on Kentwood. So tack on another 15. The Kentwood coaches really have to be disappointed with the amount of penalties they're saying. Some unnecessary stuff after whistle, after play holding those types of things will really drive a coach nuts and will drive the team backwards and that's not what you want as a team south kitsap should get a break here and they do and gonna tack on 15 yards at the end of the run and it'll be first down for the wolves at about the 50 depending on the yardage assessed on the play here should be about a 15 yard penalty a costly penalty from kentwood that's a personal foul 15 yards so a nice return by Corey Dane and uh, tacked the penalty on and it's going to be placed at the South Kitsap. Uh, oh, they're going to add on a big one here. They're there gonna, was two penalties. There were two TV. penalties. There were. There was a 15 yard unsportsmanlike and there was another, I believe, another 10 yarder for who knows what. Well, look, it looked like a hold. I think there was a hold and there was an unsportsmanlike. A total of 25 yards after the kick. And now the referees are going to, what are they going to do? They're going to huddle. Well, whatever it is, it's uh, going to be quite a gain by uh, South Kitsap here after the, uh, the kick return and all the penalties against Kentwood. So uh, we're going to see how it's going to be placed here. That's a 25-yard, wow. That is 25, 30 yards. Boy, they just keep inching that forward. I'm not sure what that second penalty was, but we saw a personal penalty a personal foul penalty as they're over trying to explain that to the coaches on the Kentwood side. But South Kitsap uh, had the ball fielded at about their own 15, 20 yard line. And now they are all the way in Kentwood territory. The ball is going to be at the Kentwood 37 yard line. So the Wolves are going to have great field position to start this series of play before half. They're going to hand the ball off to Tucker. He sidesteps around, he cuts right up and he's going to be helped actually from the tackler from behind tackled him farther forward so nice run by Tucker a gain of about eight yards on the play and it's going to be placed at the Kentwood 29 so great field position here for the Wolves with about five minutes remaining the score still tied at seven here in the first half number 20 Artis Galden a sophomore in on the tackle there for the Conquerors really pushed him forward a couple extra yards to pick up a few more Brandon Mayfield split to the far side of the field Pearson's looking for his man, and the ball was tipped at uh, the line or near the line of scrimmage. Chip Pearson with a little three-step drop-back pass to David Carter, or excuse me, David Parker, 
who split to the near side of the field, but the ball looked like it was tipped, and the pass is incomplete, and it's going to be third and short for South Kitsap, still inside the 30-yard line, and South Kitsap really needs to pick up a first down here on this play. Pearson gets the call from the coaches, and he gives the signal to the other players. They can step up to the line. We're at third down, and three here. We'll see what the Wolves' offense can do. Pearson under center. There, there was, too. There looked like the right tackle for South Kitsap flinched ever so slightly, but the officials called it, and uh, they're going to back him up, and that could be uh, a huge penalty right there for South Kitsap instead of third short. It's going to be third and long. We're going to call about third and eight. So, uh, again, D-Rod, as we are seeing here, some penalties here on both sides not really being very favorable for both South Kitsap and Kentwood. Well, you know, some penalties or almost a lot of penalties, a lot of... A lot of gold laundry here on the on the turf so far tonight, just flying all over the place. It's, you know, it's no fun to, to march the ball back and forth with penalties. It's the first game of the season, though, this is to be expected, and uh, South Kitsap should have these kinks ironed out within the next week or two. Ryan Williams in at, at fullback. Pearson's going to hand the ball off to Tucker, and he's not going anywhere as he gets stood up right. In fact, he's going to lose about a yard on the play and Kentwood doing a good job of stepping the inside. It's going to be fourth and long for South Kitsap, uh, but I still believe that this might be go for it territory for South. A little too far for a field goal and yeah. a little bit too close for a punt action. Oh, they are, they're gonna send the punt team out. I so, think, I think uh, they're gonna look to pin him back behind the 15 or maybe the 10 yard line. South, um, South Kitsap going to look to, uh, to kick the ball out here and uh, uh, try and put Kentwood deep in their own territory as uh, we just go under four minutes remaining here in the first half of play, and which is really the smart play because they don't want to take any chances. So Corey Dame back to kick. He's going to be at about his 49-yard line. Uh, the key is he wants to get the ball uh, inside the 10-yard line anywhere. It's a good snap. The kick is up. It goes off the side of his foot. It's hardly going anywhere. It's going to go forward just a little bit. Uh, Looked like he caught it off the side of his foot, and Kentwood is going to take over. Uh, there, the ball was not fielded on the play by Kentwood, and they will have it at their own 20. Uh, they're going to. It's going to be at the 21 and a half yard line. So Kentwood, they get a little bit back there, but uh, they will start deep in their own territory, and we'll see what they can do with 3:27 left here in the first half. We'll see if South Kitsap can uh, get a three and out here, possibly get the ball back uh, before uh, halftime. Something tells me Kentwood's going to try to keep it on the ground here, run some clock off. But you, you know, you never know. They might try to throw up a pass, try to get downfield and get within a scoring territory again or scoring a scoring range again for either a field goal or another touchdown. South's backfield has got to be ready for any pass. Kentwood has two wide receivers to the near side. They're going to send one man. That's Romney. Motion to the far side. There's a fumble on the play, but Warner... Uh, boy, another uh, fumble there by the quarterback. Uh, both sides a little jittery still here the first game of the season, and he's able to fall on it, and he's going to lose uh, nothing on the play. He recovered it right at the line of scrimmage. The ball will be officially, though, at the 21-yard line, and it's going to be second and 10 for, for, the, for the Conquerors as Warner is looking over in the sideline uh, getting the play here. We've got Romney. is in the slot position. Warner's gonna fake the handoff. No, he does give the ball to the up back. That's number 45, Colston Sisson. And the clock is going to continue to run. The Wolves might wanna look for a timeout here and they might just do that. They're going, uh, someone's gonna call a timeout here. With uh, 2.38 left, it's going to be third down for Kentwood. I believe that was South Kitsap calling a timeout, trying to uh, get in some clock management here, uh, anticipating they'll get the ball back, anticipating They'll be able to stop Kentwood here uh, at, on third down and force a punt and get the ball back and try to get within scoring range again. And if South Kitsap could stop them right here, uh, most likely they could call a timeout and uh, they would be able to get the ball back with uh, over two minutes to go here. So we have South Kitsap doing a nice job of clock management here from the defensive side. We have seen quite a few uh, fumbled balls here in the first half. Uh, both from the both from center and after, and after the snap during handoffs and during carries. I think about the fourth fumble too on each side. Little first game jitters should be worked out here soon. Kentwood 
uh, not looking too sharp here in this last possession or in this current possession. Uh, we'll see if South Kitsap can capitalize and try to get the ball back. Uh, nice timeout call by the SK coaching staff and DJ Sigerson. So South Kitsap calls their first timeout. That gives them two remaining. Kentwood is going to have a third and seven from their own 25-yard line. South Kitsap could save themselves a timeout if Kentwood goes to a pass situation and the pass gets incomplete or it's just short, out of bounds. They have two wide receivers split to the near side of the field. Warner is going to pitch, fake the pitch, roll to his right. He's got a man. He's flushed out of the pocket. He dances around, and he's got a man, and he throws it all the way down, and it's going to be caught. The pass is caught by number 15, Nickel Taylor. What a great throw from Warner. And, and Warner Taylor just... stretched himself out, and he caught the ball at the South Kitsap. 40, or no, excuse me, that's the South Kitsap 38-yard line. So a huge pass and catch play by Kentwood, with it, but there's still plenty of time left here, 226 remaining. Well, Warner just got popped after that pass. Number seven for the Conquerors, the quarterback. He's doing a nice job of scrambling around back there, drawing a lot of attention to himself and freeing up some other players downfield. They're going to pitch the ball to Bronson. He fakes inside, cuts outside, cuts back in again, stays on his feet, keeps his knees driving, and he gets all the way down to the 20-yard line, and it's going to be a first down for Kentwood, so just like that, one big pass play, one big run play, and Kentwood is deep into South Kitsap territory. I, I have to mention this again, Coach. Number 45 for Kentwood, Colton Sisson, with a huge block on the left side of the line, opening up that huge hole for the Conquerors runner right there to get an extra 20 plus yards on the play they are just really blocking well and putting South Kitsap back on back on their backside Bronson gets the call again side steps out to the left he gets over the 25 we'll call it a gain of six yards and it's going to be second and four for Kentwood so a couple of big running plays Demetrius Bronson doing an excellent job of running again here the blocking coming through conquerors once again they'll line up quickly uh, to get the uh, playoff as the clock runs with 1.30 left in the second quarter. Kentwood going with the no huddle offense here. Very patient. Kevin Warner doing an excellent job of time management. He's under center. He's going to fake and they give the ball to Bronson. He gets to the outside. Chased down by Renard Williams. Oh. Take it down from behind. And Williams says you're not going anywhere but backwards, baby. Renard grabbed a hold of a fistful of jersey and flung him back onto the ground. I don't think I'd be getting up from that, DB. That's what we were talking about earlier. Renard Williams, very, very quick for 311 pounds and great hands. And once he has a hold of you, you're not getting anywhere. So nice job by Williams. There's going to be a loss on the play. It's going to be third and short for the Wool or for the Conquerors. And Kentwood is now going to take their first time out. They have a third and short situation. The ball is going to be placed at the South Kitsap 14-yard line. So Kentwood is knocking on the door here with 46 seconds left in the first half. The score's tied at seven. And what do you think we might see here for Kentwood, D-Rod? I'm going to guess that they're going to go to the bread and butter, the ground game. Although on that last play, Renard Williams, as you mentioned, light on his feet and very quick. Getting to the to the runner, it looked like there was a wide open gap up the right side, off tackle right, and Renard just closed the gap and uh, spun him down. I think that uh, that might stick in the minds of the coaches uh, right now that they might not be able to run the ball as easily as they were before. They may be uh, looking at uh, an option or a pass play, probably a pass play a little bit uh, safer of a choice here with 45 seconds left. They're looking to score again, put South down 14-7 going into half. And it right now it's uh, third down so if they don't score here, they'll probably go for it again. Sometimes high school kickers don't have quite the range of college and especially pro kickers. So probably looking for a touchdown rather than the field goal unless they get within 10 yards. Kentwood a little shaky at the beginning of the game, but uh, some pregame jitters as they quickly come out of the huddle here in the I formation. And Warner is going to pitch the ball to Bronson. He's going to try and cut up. No, he's taken down and he loses his helmet. Renard Williams says, don't even think about coming over here again. And while you're at it, that helmet's coming off. And boy, the boys having a little bit of chest bumping after the play. Uh, Renard really taking him down hard again. Number 30 for Kentwood.
Demetrius Bronson and number 62 for the Wolves, Bernard Williams, as we'd expect, a face-to-face -face matchup with these two uh, high school stars really going at each other, and it's uh, everything we uh, we thought it would be with 25 seconds left in the second quarter. Kentwood calls another timeout. I think they have one left. And South Kitsap has no timeouts left. Bernard Williams doing an excellent job of moving down the offensive line. And when he hit Bronson, Bronson's helmet came off. So Williams sending a message here saying that you guys might be driving deep into our territory, but it's going to cost you when you come in. So, uh, But at 311 pounds, I would imagine that uh, most of your body armor would fall off when Renard Williams hits you. Well, I thought the Kentwood coaches would maybe stay away from the run play off tackle right with Renard establishing himself on second down there. Now third down does the same thing again, and that is a helmet-popping play, as you mentioned. I haven't seen that in a while in a high school game where another player's helmet came off as a result of a tackle. But what else are we going to expect from a South Kitsap defense and Renard Williams, number 62? Uh, Kentwood in the middle of a timeout now discussing what their, their uh, next plan of attack. They're at fourth down on the uh, about the 12-yard line, about the 14-yard line. They've got three to go. 32 seconds gets put back on the clock. It's some uh, more clock, well, another clock issue here. They have some time up on the clock. It goes from 24 to 32 seconds. And they are spreading the field in the shotgun, number seven for Kentwood. It's gonna be, wait for the long snap. Warner, and here we go. Warner's ready for the snap. Three wide receivers, and he's going to roll out to his left, and he's looking for a man out in the left flight. He doesn't have anything, and he's going to try and get over, and he is not going to get the first, or he is going to get the first down. I don't think, I didn't think he got it, Coach. He did. He got it. At first, it didn't look like he was going to get it, but he did. But uh, they're going to quickly stop the clock as they move the chains down, and in high school football, they do until they get it set, and then they start the clock again. So 20 seconds left, and Warner is just going to spike the ball and stop the clock there so it's going to be second down and eight yards to go second down and goal inside the wolves 10 yard line with 19 seconds left here in the first half so kentwood taking a gamble could have easily gone for a field goal but they chose not to do so and uh they could get a little greedy here could cost them some points on the board before halftime as warner is coming back from the sideline south kitsap Hoping to stop Kentwood here. If South, Kits if South Kitsap stops him here uh, on the ground, Kentwood will be forced to take their last time out. Weinbreck and split to the near side of the field. Bronson in at tailback. Warner drops straight back, looking for a man, dances around a little bit, and he's got a man, and it is overthrown. The pass is going to be incomplete. Uh, the pass was intended for Ryan Patterson, the 5'8 junior for Kentwood. And it's going to be third and goal as uh, the clock is going to run out here, but that is going to be wrong. Uh, they didn't stop it in time, and they're going to have to put some more time on the clock here. Probably the pass about, was incomplete. About 12 seconds. The pass was incomplete. I believe there was about 12 seconds left. There was about 12 seconds left on the clock, and the pass was incomplete, but uh, the clock kept running, and they ran it all the way down to about three seconds. So... Uh, we're going to wait to have the uh, the time put back up on the scoreboard here. So South Kitsap a bit lucky there. Uh, the guy, uh, Kentwood man was wide open in the back of the end zone. South Kitsap did an excellent job with the prevent coverage there in the red zone as uh, Kentwood tried to spread him out. They were in the shotgun formation, and Warner had a man in the back of the end zone uh, running to the far side of the field, but the pass was incomplete, and uh, it's going to be third and goal for Kentwood. And uh, they're placing the ball just inside the 10 yard line. We'll call it the nine. So third and goal for Kentwood. They only need nine yards. They have two wide receivers split to the far side. And now we're going to have an official's timeout. It looked like there was a very brief equipment timeout here called by the officials. So Warner under center, he's going to send a man in motion. He stumbles a little bit, fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. He's looking for a man, points to the end zone. He throws it up anyway, and he's just going to be out of bounds, and the pass is going to be incomplete. And it's going to be fourth and goal for Kentwood with eight seconds left here in the first half. So nice job by South Kitsap on the defensive end. South doing a very good job of holding their own here. I think it's going to be third down. 
for South. No, it is going to be fourth down. You're right. Fourth down for Kent Withers. Going to run the clock out. Not quite sure about the clock issues here, but uh, I'm sure we'll get those resolved by the second half. Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, what the deal is here either, as uh, they're just going to, there were, there were eight, we thought there were eight seconds left on the scoreboard, but uh, uh, both teams are heading into the locker room, so it is a tie here at halftime as um, South, South Kitsap uh, and Kentwood are tied here at seven at Joe Knowles Field at South Kitsap High School, but uh, a little shaky start with a few penalties here and there, a couple of mishaps, small fumbles, a couple of turnovers, but uh, we have also seen some excellent football here tonight by both sides for the first football game of the season. Yeah, you know, uh, I think maybe a lot uh, other teams might uh, not be as uh, as sharp as these two teams have come out and, and played so far, but both of them are, look pretty well. The very few mistakes, really, although not, you wouldn't be able to guess that by the amount of penalties. But as far as 11-on-11 11 11 football goes, I think that both sides look uh, very well prepared, very well coached, and, and ready to go for the first game of the season. And as we talk about that, we get ready for the SK marching machine to come out on the field. Uh, quite a few uh, band participants ready to give us a nice halftime show. Kentwood really owning the ground game so far, up until the very end when Renard Williams, number 62, this 300-pound uh, senior for South, uh, establishes dominance inside. Uh, Kent would try to run in on him twice, off tackle right, and both times Renard said no way. And that's making uh, Kentwood, I believe, uh, reconsider their, their ground attack and maybe they go, go to the air a little bit more in the second half. Kentwood was looking like they were in dire straits there uh, in, uh, they were deep in their own territory and they completed a huge pass from Warner to Taylor that got the ball past midfield for South uh, for Kentwood. But uh, South Kitsap did an excellent job of stopping the Conquerors on defense as uh, Kentwood was driving and driving, but they were not able to get into the end zone again. So despite being able to rack up some, some big yards on offense, South Kitsap's defense doing a nice job of stopping them and, and accomplishing their main goal, and that's keeping points off the board. And South Kitsap's offense on the other side of the line is doing a pretty good job. You know, Chip Pearson, his first time as a quarterback, is a senior, so he's had to wait his turn to get step into the position. He's doing a very good job. Uh, nice uh, play calling or play receiving from the coaches and uh, getting that information off to, to the other offensive players and they're doing a nice job. Uh, one interception in the first half and a fumble, uh, fumble from one of our running backs. Other than that, looks okay for the offensive standpoint. Kentwood got some big boys on the line on both sides uh, doing a good job of stopping some of those gaps. Well, uh, here we have for our halftime entertainment, uh, we're going to have now the South Kitsap High School Marching Band. And directed by Mr. Gary Grams, the uh, professor of the marching machine is going to direct this fine-tuned marching band out here on the field tonight for our awesome halftime entertainment. We thank Gary Grams and the marching band for all their effort and off-season work. The band looks ready to go on the far sideline. And uh, the drum rangers are ready to go, and we will see you after halftime. 7-7 seven, seven at a half here in Port Orchard.
Welcome back to, uh, we're just completing halftime here at Joe Knowles Field at South Kitsap High School, and South Kitsap and Kentwood are tied at seven uh, here at Joe Knowles Field, and uh, so far it's been a really good half of uh, football, and uh, with two great powerhouses in the 4A class rankings throughout the state of Washington, and uh, we've seen uh, South Kitsap got on the board first with a 15-yard touchdown pass uh, from Chip Pearson to Corey Hawkins, and then Kentwood uh, got on the board as well with a three-yard touchdown run from Demetrius Bronson, and it has been tied at seven cents. Uh, we've seen a little bit of jitters. We've seen some penalties, and uh, we've seen just about everything here in this first game, but uh, uh, the South Kitsap Wolves will be receiving the kickoff here uh, from Kentwood as uh, both sides uh, just met in the locker rooms at halftime and trying to work out the kinks. And uh, Smith is back to kick. And uh, Corey Dame and Chad Fowler are back to receive. And it looks like it's going to be Corey Dame again from his own 17-yard line. He's got a nice little wall. He's got a few blocks up. He puts on a little burst of speed power. And he gets all the way up near midfield. Nice return by Corey Dame. No penalty flags. And just like that, the kickoff after halftime and South Kitsap is going to have great field position to start and that's what you're looking for here. Great job of following his blockers right up to midfield, the 50 yard line, that's where the South Kitsap Wolves will start this second half of football. Coming out of the locker room, ready to go, special teams keyed up. Awesome field position for the Wolves to see if Kentwood could stand them up. First half, first half was a really a strong example of smash mouth football both teams ramming it down each other's throats and now we'll see uh, we'll see how much energy they have left in the second half i'm guessing 20 and it should be a great half pearson drops look to his right he's got a man open and it looks like it, it is and it's going to be caught by south kitsap nice throw by chip pearson all the way down to the 20 yard line who is that receiving that ball db who, who caught that let's see i think that was David Parker split to the far side of the field. We do have a man that is down. And there they go, they both get up. Yes, that is the speedster, David Parker. Well, I thought that pass was overthrown, DB. It looked like it was out of his range, but boy, he just reached out, grabbed it, came down with it, knocked the wind out of him, I think, a little bit, maybe both players. Well, it was a First nice down. throw by Pearson to the right side. Pierce, and Pearson showing us a little bit of what he can do with his, with his arm here in the, in the game. Maybe we'll look for a little bit more of that. Parker had to adjust his route a little bit, came to the inside, and uh, was able to make the catch for a 30-yard pass completion. The ball is at the Kentwood 20-yard line, so a great start by South here in the second half. Pearson's going to hand the ball off to the fullback, straight up the middle, and he keeps his legs barreling up. Nice job. I think that was Burlingame back in the game here. About four yards on the on the game for the Wolves. Really, uh, really just powering forward. South Kitsap now just trying to smack Kentwood in the mouth here at the start of the second half. Check that. That was Corey Hawkins. As uh, the Wolves get about five yards on the play. Aaron Scott, Sean Lang, and Cooper Canton, the big two, are the ball boys tonight. Pearson under center, second short for the Wolves. They hand the ball off to Tucker. He escapes a couple of ankle tackles and he barrels his way forward. He's going to be close to the first down marker. Number 70, Matt Cleveland there to, to initiate the host of tackling for Kentwood uh, Senior, 6'4". Brings down, was that Parker, DB, on the carry? That was Tucker, Tucker. on the play. My, my Steph, that was Stephen Tucker. And uh, the Wolves get inside, just inside uh, the 10 yard line. And we're going to call it, uh, it'll be first and goal. Uh, and they will need about 10 yards to get in. So the Wolves are knocking on the door here. Brandon Mayfield still in, wide receiver split to the near side of the field. Parker on the right. Wolves Pearson. coming out of the locker room, charged up, ready to go. He's going to hand the ball quickly up to the fullback. That's Burling game, and he gets into the end zone. High stepping it. Touchdown, South Kitsap. Just, just like that, the Wolves get on the board. That's Josh Burling game, who had a little stinger earlier in the first half, but the only thing he did where there was sting the defense of Kentwood. Burling game charging forward, off tackle left, charging, charging. Touchdown. South Kitsap, 13-7. So a nice kickoff return by Corey Dame near midfield. 
a huge pass completion from Chip Pearson to to David to David Parker, and then a nice a, a, another small run, and the kick is going to be up, and it is good by Quincy Lyman, and just a few plays like that with 10:31 uh, left here. Uh, hold everything though. We're getting a few whistles. There is a penalty flag down at the 10-yard line. I believe the extra point is going to be good, and they will just assess it on the kickoff. It is against Kentwood, and it will count. That's 14-7, South Kitsap. A minute and a half into the second half. Once again, the Wolves get on the board quick. That's going to be a personal foul penalty against Kentwood. Well, the coaches really have to be screaming about their players picking up all these additional penalties after the play. Kentwood has had three or four personal foul penalties, and uh, those are just killers. Those are 15-yard penalties, and uh, those are the type of penalties that uh, you cannot afford if you want to have a chance of winning a football game as South Kitsap 10-31 here in the early in the third quarter lead to Kentwood now 14-7. South Kitsap ready to go, then rehuddling with the coaches on the near sideline. Kentwood. Coming out, ready to begin their formation. There was a penalty after the, the extra point kick. We'll see where that's assessed, either before or after the kick. It should be after the kick. The officials are gathered on the Kentwood side, near the Kentwood sideline, about the 20 yard line. And they uh, appear to be having some kind of a, a little meeting with one of the coaches from Kentwood. And uh, I'm not sure what uh, was going on. I looked like they were trying to explain what was going on to the Kentwood coaches. Well, I can, I can probably dive into the mind of the Kentwood head coach right now. And, and first of all, at the end of the first half, the half, there was some clock difficulties. And I think the Kentwood coaches feel they got uh, possibly a, a gypped a little bit on the, on the clock at the end of the first half. They were uh, barking in the ears of the officials at the end of that half. And now coming out here, I think that they're uh, be believing that there was a personal foul penalty on Kentwood. I did not see the number of the player, but that player for Kentwood, according to the official, has been ejected from the contest. I, I'm going to assume that that might be a, one of the players who was involved in another personal foul penalty earlier in the game. A little too much aggression, too much charge in these Kentwood players, and uh, spilling out onto the field, really hurting their own team. And that player has been injected. South Kitsap will be kicking the ball from the Kentwood 45. It's going to be a little squib kick down to the corner. It's going to be Bronson from his own 10-yard line, and he's got a little opening, and he hurdles over the tackler. He's taken down by number 24, Chad Fowler. But uh, a big play there by... That, that pushed the kickoff up to the 50-yard line. And now Kentwood's back at the 25. That's a huge penalty. I don't know where that player is, Coach. Apparently he's been injected. Well, usually if you have been ejected from a contest, uh, I don't know, I, I can't remember the ruling uh, for football, but uh, I don't think that the player is allowed to be on the sideline. And if he is, he surely is not going to be entering the contest anymore. So uh, uh, there was a player, we saw the official motion that a player had been ejected from the game. And a note to all those little football wolves out there is best just to keep your head and stay in the game. That's right. So Kentwood comes out at the South Kitsap 28, 27 yard line. And they're going to hand the ball straight up to the tackle, but there's the freight train. That's Renard Williams. And he's putting a halt to any cars that come in through there. There's no gain on the play. And it's going to be second long for the wool for the conquerors. Renard once again, stopping the run game single handedly of Kentwood. We've got another whistle from the officials. There was a player down for Kentwood, Colton Hiles, number 37, and it looked like uh, he may have been cramping up in his leg. Uh, uh, it didn't look like an injury, and he was able to go off under his own power, so it's going to be second long as uh, there's some more player substitutions here for uh, both sides. So uh, South Kitsap here a little rejuvenated, and that's one of the strengths of the South Kitsap football team in the past. Uh, is which uh, that they usually wear teams down with that good conditioning that they've had uh, in the off season. So anyways, it's going to be second long here. Kentwood's going to send a man in motion. That's Patterson going to the far side of the field. They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson. He scoots out the outside of the left tackle. He's got a little breathing room and a defender falls down. 
Corey Dame is right there to help stop him. Another helmet comes flying off. And, uh, but he's able to get across the first down marker and it's going to be a gain of about 13 yards. Well, this may be the first game of the season, Coach, but these players are keyed up and ready to go. This game is at a very fast pace with runners and the tacklers They're trying to outrace each other. That time, Kentwood wins and they pick up the first down. Demetrius Bronson, the 5'10", 190 pound junior, is doing an excellent job at tailback and uh, he's been getting a, a pretty good uh, showing from his offensive line, creating some, some holes and openings for him to get outside. So first and 10 for Kentwood, just inside the South Kitsap 40 yard line. A man comes in motion to the near side. They're gonna hand the ball off to Bronson again, and he is not going to get very much on this play. Uh, he's going to be taken down around the 43 yard line. Bronson with a short carry. It's going to be third and long for Kentwood. So here is a big test for the South Kitsap defense as number 52, Matt Foxworthy, comes off the field for the Wolves. It's going to stay at second down for Kentwood as they come up to the line. They have uh, two wideouts, two backs. Second and eight. Warner's gonna hand the ball off to Bronson again. He tries to cut back up. It looked like he lost his footing a little bit due to the fact that a South Kitsap tackler got in there and tripped him up a little bit. So another short gain on the play and it's going to be third and five. We'll call it third and five for Kentwood. And Kentwood's addicted to their own running game right now. They're just keeping it on the ground, trying to ram it, ram it up the middle. Uh, off tackle left, off tackle right. Taking their chances. And who wouldn't be addicted with that very good running back there, Demetrius Bronson, doing an excellent job. So we'll see some big things from him in the future. Third, and they're going to hand the ball up to Bronson again, and he's going to try and skip through there, keeps his leg driving, but he is not going to make the first down marker as he is short, just stopped short of midfield. So nice job from South Kitsap there and uh, of stopping this series for Kentwood and uh, they're going to have to punt the ball away, so good job by South Kitsap's defense. Well, Kentwood really just getting up to the line quick, trying to take the South Kitsap Wolves off guard and uh, running plays quickly. No huddle, and let's uh, also keep an eye on any trick plays that Kentwood might try to run here uh, early on in the season. It is the third quarter, time is ticking. They don't necessarily need to go punt the ball away again, down seven points. A penalty flag comes onto the field near the South Kitsap 25-yard line, and... A penalty assessed against the Kentwood Conquerors once again. The delay of game penalty for Kentwood might give them just a little more breathing room, and uh, the ball is going to be spotted around the 40-yard line after they move this ball back. So, uh, Sean Staten and Corey Dane are back to receive the punt. Between these two teams, I think they have more penalties than a Raiders game. And there are usually a lot of penalties in the Raiders game. So fourth down here, Kentwood, a little low snap, bobbled, and it goes off the side of the foot of the Kentwood punter. It's going to bounce straight up, and it's going to hit down. They're going to clear out of there, but South Kitsap's going to get good field position. The ball is going to be down at the South, the SK 34-yard line. So South Kitsap's going to have very good field position here to start their second series of play. And that punt, a hand length away from being blocked or tipped, by the uh, South Kitsap special teams right there, uh, giving South a good field position. The kicker uh, kicked it off the right side of his foot, it looked like, and we're gonna be down here at the 39 yard line of South Kitsap, looking to punch it into Kentwood territory here. David Parker split to the far side of the field. Stephen Tucker is the tailback. Pearson is gonna hand the ball off to Tucker on a little counter, he sidesteps his way back off left guard he ekes his way forward and gets over the 35 will place it at the 36 yard line uh, so only a couple of yards on the play we're going to call it two it'll be second and eight so south kitsap uh, looking to go to the running game here with uh, 615 left in the third quarter south kitsap up 14 7 and they're going to uh, go no huddle we're going to have a stoppage of play here by the officials uh, let's see, Jordan Johnson for the Conquerors is coming off the field. Looks like he needed a substitution. South Kitsap is now, now on board with the no huddle offense, it looks like, Coach. And Richard Bracknell, the 5'8 senior for Kentwood, is going to take his place. So South Kitsap ready to go here, second long. Pearson 
takes a step back, looks for his man. Oh, and it was the pass was thrown just a little bit low, but still catchable. The intended receiver was Brandon Mayfield. Pearson took a little three-step drop, looked to his left. Mayfield was there and uh, might have been a little underthrown, but still catchable, but the ball was uh, not caught. The pass is incomplete, and it's going to be third and long for the Wolves. Pearson really uh, reared back and rifled that thing in there towards uh, Mayfield. Nice looking pass, just like you said, possibly a little bit low, but boy, a lot of velocity on that ball. Pearson's gotten a lot better since last season. The Wolves will send two wide receivers to the far side of the field. Sean Staten in now in, uh, in the game. David Parker. Pearson's looking to the right. He's got, oh, and the pass is intercepted. It was underthrown a little bit. He had a man near the 45 yard line. The pass was intended for David Parker and that is Chip Pearson's second interception of the night. Uh, there was a little seam right there, but uh, unfortunately the ball was uh, the ball was intercepted, and so Kentwood gets a, a, a big break right here and gets the ball back. Once again, South Kids have defense on the field. They're going to really have to put in some, some big time here tonight, try to keep Kentwood out of the end zone again and defend that lead. Six minutes left in the third quarter here at Joe Knowles in Port Orchard, Washington. Still a few nerves out there uh, on the offensive end, but uh, a lot of football left here in this season, something that's uh, so a little expected here. As uh, Warner under center now again, I formation for the Conquerors. He's gonna fake the option, he's gonna keep it, he's gonna roll, look to pitch, but he, he doesn't get it, and there's the fumble on the play, and it's going to be recovered by the Wolves, they get it right back. Boy, Warner just seems a little discombobulated back there in the backfield, not the first time that's happened tonight. Gives the ball up, and South Kids out right there to pounce on it. The defenders pick up the ball, fumble recovery, first down, South Kitsap at the 47. Warner has struggled with that option play a little bit here all tonight, especially in the first half. Uh, it seems like he's been holding on to the ball just a little bit too long, and on that option play, you have got to make up your mind whether you're going to hand that ball off or keep it. It's gotta be quick, and, and right there again, uh, he had a fumble earlier in the first half, and right, and, but he was able to recover it. And this one, he fumbled, and South Kitsap gets the ball back. At, team, at times, it seems he's a little indecisive there, uh, scrambling around in the backfield, and maybe the, the play doesn't go the way he wants it to, or just guy's not doing the right thing, or, or whatever. For whatever reason, he just seems a little, uh, little uh, indecisive there. And South Kitsap defense is really all over him and just chasing him all around. There is a man down on the field for South Kitsap that's uh, Corey Dane. And he looks but, okay. Uh, he uh, cramping up a little bit there. We've seen that on both sides of the field for both teams and uh, something that can happen, but... Uh, Gotta uh, have plenty of water. He's gonna, be, he's gonna be just fine. He's a tough kid and uh, he's coming out of the game, but he'll be back in real soon. So South Kitsap cuts a big break. They're gonna have the ball at their own 46 yard line. Two wide receivers, Pearson looking to his left. He's got Mayfield who catches the ball, cuts inside, gets a nice block, hangs onto the ball, gets all the way to the 40 yard line. Nice pass play completion from Pearson to Mayfield. It's a gain of about 13 yards. Mayfield did a nice job cutting back through the inside, getting a couple extra four or five yards out of that play. A nice quick move and nice blocking from his teammates. Pearson looked out to the left and had Mayfield out through a nice pass and uh, the flow of the defense carried him past. Mayfield cut back up, got a nice gain on the play. Pearson's gonna hand the ball up to the, to the fullback. That's, that's Corey Hawkins, and he's taken down quick. He's going to get about three on the play. We'll call it, we'll call it three, it'll be second seven. Looks like uh, number 64, Greg Humphreys, the 6'3 sophomore, in on the tackle, or Kentwood. And uh, South Kitsap, really speeding up the offense here tonight. I'm not sure if that's a, a one game thing or an all season thing, but they're looking very good so far. Here they'll huddle and then get up to the line. David Parker goes to the far side of the field. Chad Fowler now in at wide receiver, the near side. Tucker still in. They're gonna fake the handoff. Nice fake by Pearson, he's got a man and it's blocked away. Nice defense by Jordan Johnson. He just reached his hand out and knocked the ball out. It was a nice fake by Pearson, but the defender was right there. And uh, he did a good job in just knocking the ball down. Incomplete, it'll be third and seven for the Wolves. Pearson with a nice job of quarterbacking footwork there, able to stay away from the defender and get the pass off. 
A better play, however, from the Kentwood defender, Johnson, to knock the pass away. Pearson with a nice fake, did fake with the handoff up the middle and did just enough, was able to buy a few seconds to roll out to the right. As Wolves come out, Fowler and Parker again. High formation. They're gonna hand the ball off to Tucker and he gets, he's met right at near the line of scrimmage and nothing doing right there. Maybe, in fact, I don't think there was any gain on the play and it's going to be fourth and long for the Wolves. So Kentwood with the turnover. South Kitsap threw an interception. The next play, Kentwood fumbles and it is recovered by South Kitsap, but three, three and out for the Wolves here and they are going to kick it. But if they're, if they play their cards right, they should kick the ball deep into Kentwood territory and make them start back near their own end zone. If it wasn't for that 13-yard uh, reception from Mayfield, uh, South Kitsap would be punting in some possibly uh, bad territory here, but well, they've got decent field position and hopefully they can pin Kentwood back here. And Kentwood sends there. nobody back it's and they're fake. gonna fake it. They're gonna fake it up the middle and it goes nowhere, it fools nobody. And the Wolves are, they, they were in a punt formation, Kentwood, sent nobody back Kentwood's to receive the kick. It was almost as if they knew what was going on. Kentwood's number 74, Hunter Blackmore, and number 52, Andre Hughes, all over it and not fooled. South should have just punted it. But, you know, that's the way it goes. So Kentwood, after the fake punt by the Wolves, are uh, for practically no gain. They lost a couple on the play, and Kentwood is going to have the ball at their own 40-yard line. Demetrius Bronson back in at tailbacks. Had a little rest here. They send a man in motion. They're going to pitch the ball to Bronson. He's going to try and get to the outside. Nice block by the tackle. And he's taken out of bounds for a, maybe a gain of one yard. Nice job by the South Kitsap defense. Boy, are they just all over the place tonight or what, Coach? The defense is really stepping it up. Boy, Matt Cleveland, the 6'4", 280 offensive lineman was right there and sealed off a nice block there on the corner for Bronson. But boy, the Wolves are so quick there with everybody else. They're able to swarm on the ball for a very small gain. It'll be a gain of one, second down and a long nine for Kentwood. They come out with two wide receivers. They're gonna have the hand delay back to Bronson. Ain't nothing doing right there. You betcha, baby. Nice job by the Wolves on defense. They're pretty jacked up. That's number 43, Josh Burling game, and the only game they're playing is his on D. They're running around, they're flying, they're jumping, they're all over these Kentwood Conquerors. They're totally psyched up, coming out of the locker room, keyed up from get-go, ready to play. Go, the South Kitsap Wolves on defense, totally keyed into the, the Conquerors offensive scheme. It's almost like they know it's coming. No gain on the play. It's going to be a third and a long nine for Kentwood. So South, Kip, South Kitsap's defense a little fired up here with uh, just over three minutes remaining, still leading Kentwood 14 to seven as Kentwood breaks the huddle. And they're going to send out three wide receivers, two to the far side of the field. And the Kentwood calls a timeout, their first of the half. Uh, something that may affect this game later on down the road. South Kitsap still has all three. Kentwood now only with two. Kentwood with only two timeouts. They're going to burn one right here and talk about it. So uh, South Kitsap did a nice job coming out at the start of the, of the second half. And they ran about four or five plays and were able to get into the end zone. And one of the strengths of the Wolves this year is going to be their defense. Absolutely. And if, so far tonight we're seeing a, an excellent matchup between the Kentwood offensive line and the South Kitsap defense, and uh, Kentwood's really laying out some good blocks there tonight, but at the same time, South Kitsap, especially in the second half, has really shored up that defense, and Kentwood's getting nothing easy the second half. In fact, South Kitsap has really shown us some incredible defensive plays flying all over the field. You know, we listed all the coaches from South Kitsap earlier, and one coach that uh, I see on the sideline that they left off uh, was a, a former South Kitsap High School student and player for our team, and that, was, that is Sean Banks, and he is down there on the sideline. So, Sean, welcome to the South Kitsap coaching staff here as uh, Kentwood comes out third and long. They're in the shotgun formation. Two wide receivers split to the far side. Warner's going to roll out to his left. He's looking for a man. He's going to overthrow him. The pass is going to be incomplete. Nice defense by South Kitsap. And fourth, fourth it's going down to be for fourth and long for Kentwood, so... Good job by the South Kitsap defense. Several former players for South Kitsap helping coach on the sideline, including Eric Canton, 
and Adam Knauss, both standouts for the South Kitsap Wolves team in the past. As well as Ron Ness and Dustin Booth. Good to see those guys on the sidelines. In fact, I think Joey Dame and Jim Fairweather. I think you're right. The snap is back, the kick is up. It's gonna be fielded by South Kitsap at the 25. Nice, there's a little bit of running room out there. Nice job by that Sean State. Well, he's Excellent. really done a good job tonight. Did a great job, balls. fielded the ball around the 20-yard line. He gets all the way up. It's about a 23-yard return. You can see between State and, and Dame, they're, they're very well coached. They've got good instincts as well, and they're just fine. The, the seams and the alleys and the, on the special teams when they receive kicks, they're doing a very good job tonight picking up extra yards for the offense. They don't try and get everything at once, but uh, they do try and get things when they can. They're just playing it smart, and they're just trying to get, like I said, an extra few yards here and there. You know, an extra five yards from the special teams really helps out that offense. Gets that end zone on your backs farther and farther away. Really nice job from 87, Staten, and 13, Corey Dame so far in this game. South gets up in the power eye formation. And the ball up to Tucker, and he's got a little bit of room, stays up the middle, dances on the feet, and fumbles the ball, and it's going to be recovered by Kentwood. What a play, what a what a fumble, and what a recovery. Nice run by Tucker, just could not hold on to the ball. Nice run. He shrugs his head when he comes up, but that's okay. A uh, little, uh, uh, unfortunately, a turnover right there. Had a nice seam up the middle, but uh, got popped pretty hard. And when he did... DB, do you get the feeling that this is a feels like a heavyweight boxing match with two, two big guys just slugging it out toe-to-toe? -to -toe? And this is one heck of a fight with some great athletes on both sides and great coaching on both sides. Kentwood has the ball at their own 43-yard line. There looks like a little confusion. They're going to pitch the ball off the option. Bronson gets the ball, but he's not getting anywhere. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe the clock keeps running here. Still a little bit hesitant with uh, the quarterback in the backfield on that option and some other plays, giving uh, South's defense a, a chance to catch up to the play and make a play. So far, South Kitsap doing a good job of sniffing out the option or anything else that number seven, uh, Kevin Warner, the quarterback, senior for Kentwood is throwing at South, sniffing out the plays early and uh, finishing uh, finishing off with nice tackles later on in the play. Much better job of tackling here in the second half for South. Practically no gain on the play. Kentwood comes out with three wide receivers, shotgun formation again. Warner calling the calling the plays. They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson. No, they do. No, they hand it off to Bronson. Oh, and he's ankle tackled. Flag on the play. <laughs> Great fake there by Warner. Looked like they were going to throw the ball, but they handed the ball off to Bronson. But there is a penalty flag down along with a Kentwood player on the far side of the field. He looks like he's in pain and he's down. It's going to be an illegal procedure call against Kentwood. So a pretty big gain. It looked like it was going to be a first down on the run by Bronson, but an illegal procedure call, they're going to scoot him back five yards. Boy, that Bronson is a, he's a flyer. He is all over the field, up and down, and uh, difficult to tackle, and he's checking in at 190. That's a tough guy to bring down. We're looking at the player who's down for Kentwood on the far sideline. Can't really see him yet. We hope he's okay. Uh, looks like uh, they've got the trainers and a coach out there, unless they're both trained. I know one's a trainer, and... Uh, they're checking him out. They've got his leg. They're looking at, they might be looking at his knee. They're gonna gingerly take him off there. That's uh, number six. That's Troy Romney, a six foot, 180 pound senior. So they take him off the field. We hope that young man's going to be okay, but it looks like it could be a knee problem as uh, Kentwood is going to have second long, about second 15 to go here. Only a minute and a half left in the third quarter of tonight's contest. Still in the shotgun formation, Warner they're going to hand the fake the handoff, and he's going to run up to his left, and he's got a lot of room to go here. There goes Warner. Nice fake there. Warner hasn't been doing any of the running tonight. He gets a great fake to Bronson. Had me faked out. And he gets the first down. That's a gain of about 17 yards on the play. Nice play call from, from Kentwood. They uh, saw The coaches saw something in the defense that they liked, and they uh, took advantage of it, ran the fake, and right up the middle, Bronson goes again. Warner... 
The 5'11", 170 pound senior did a nice job. We haven't seen him do any running at all tonight, but uh, that's his first carry that I can see from according to our statistics. And uh, he does, he picks up a, a key first down into Wolf territory, placed the ball at about the South Kitsap 45 yard line. They're gonna hand the ball back off to Bronson on a counter. He's gonna try and get sidestep around, gets up off to the left hash mark, gets about seven yards on the play. It's gonna be second three, so Kentwood sticking with that running game as we now have under a minute to go here in the game. South Kitsap still leading 14 to seven. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. And uh, with that, uh, we got 40, 40 seconds of the clock ticking in the third quarter here. So Kentwood's gonna see if they can try and get a few more yards here before they uh, go to the final quarter. Two wide receivers split to the far side. Warner is going to hand the ball off to Bronson. He hits the hole hard and boys, he spun around, taken down, continues on his feet. Met by Renard Williams, the freight train, but the freight train was dragged a little bit by Bronson all the way down to the Wolves 25. Boy, was Bronson hit hard, spun around and just kept backpedaling. Hey, uh, um, Renard William, Williams really met him there, but boy, did Bronson really drag him for a few yards. That's a tough kid. What a what a, a matchup there, and I believe Kentwood just took their second their second timeout, or they're just gonna let the clock run down. They're just gonna let the clock run down here and keep the ball and go into the fourth quarter with a 14-7 deficit. They're gonna switch. Uh, they're gonna switch ends here as uh, we come to the end of the third quarter of play south kitsap leads kentwood 14 to 7 and it should be quite an exciting finish here i just really feel like this is a battle of two teams who are ready to play have uh, put in a lot of effort and a lot of uh, train uh, physical training in the off season and they look really ready to go i just feel like that these are two heavyweights and they're slugging it out to the end and Really, there's no clear-cut advantage so far for either team. I will say that, like once again, that Kentwood's offensive line looks very strong and very well coached, along with South Kitsap's defense. They also look very strong and very well coached. I see this one going down to the, to the last minute. Well, as we said earlier, one of South Kitsap's strengths in the history of their football program has been their conditioning. And uh, one of the things that South Kitsap has been successful in is wearing the other team down. But we have to remember that this is one of the premier football teams in the state as well, the Kentwood Conquerors. And uh, they've, they've won a state title. They've been in state contention uh, the last several years. And uh, it's just going to be a great finish here as uh, both sides are coming out onto the field now. Kentwood is going to have the ball at the South Kitsap 25 yard line. We're looking for a very nice standoff here to see if South defense can keep Kentwood out of the end zone, get the ball back, and hold on to that lead till the end of the game. Kentwood with a nice crowd following him here tonight as well, as Kentwood is going to come out with three wide receivers again, that, that shotgun formation. Warner looking over the defense. Last time he did this, he ran for 18 yards, a little high snap, they're gonna hand the ball off, not going anywhere! You bet, that's the, that's the freight train right there, and he says, get off my track! Bernard Williams coming in and pounding the Kentwood runner onto the ground, that's a pancake. Bernard Williams with a great tackle, they handed the ball off to the fullback, that was Corey Rodriguez, the junior for Kentwood. And right there was Williams and the defense. And they drove him back for about a five yard loss. It'll be second and 15 for Kentwood. Boy, was he ready. Nice tackle, Renard. Nice job, South Kitsap defense. We'll see if Kentwood can snap up here and rise to the challenge. They're down seven with just over 11 left in the game here in Port Orchard. Also a nice crowd for South Kitsap on hand here, about two or 3,000. We're going to have another penalty flag here. No surprise. And I'm going to think that it is. It's a delay of game. Again. So we're going to back them up. Not only did they get a five yard loss on the play, but uh, they're gonna add another five onto that. It's going to be second and 20. But this is where South Kitsap 
needs to make sure that they stay disciplined because this is the kind of thing you don't want to have them in the second long and let him get that first down. So Kentwood comes out with three wide receivers again, shotgun formation, south on it all over the place. Warner's going to fake the handoff, roll off to his left. He's going to move up. He's going for a man down on the left-hand side, and he's going to overthrow him. The pass is going to be incomplete. The coverage by Chad Fowler. Nice coverage from South Kitsap down deep in the end zone. And uh, number seven, once again, Kevin Warner, the quarterback for Kentwood, launches a pass. Not something we've really seen him do much tonight. Only probably the fifth or sixth long pass, maybe, that we've seen all night. Nico Taylor was the intended receiver. Warner did a nice job of evading the, the tackler. Could have run, had a lot of room on that left-hand side, but he went for it and he threw the ball down to where Taylor was running, but the pass was incomplete. And it's going to be third and 20 for Kentwood as they come out in the shotgun formation once again. Warner gives the signal, fakes the handoff. He's gonna run up. There's that big play that he had the last time. Warner's gonna cut back up the middle of the field. He's not going to have the first down, but he gets a big chunk of it back. It's going to be fourth down, but this is go fourth down and go territory. And he gets uh, probably about 15 of that 20 yards back. It's gonna be fourth and five for Kentwood in South Kitsap territory. In fact, the ball is at the South Kitsap 19 yard line now. They've run that, uh, that off tackle right fake twice in a row and South defense has bit both times. That left side's been wide open both times. This time, Warner gets the opening and runs upfield, fourth down. Patterson split to the far side of the field, gets what gets out even wider. That's Rodriguez at, in the, at tailback. Warner is going to pitch the ball to Rodriguez. He's going to try and get to the outside. He does. He gets a little opening, spins around, taken down, and he's going to get inside. It's going to be first down for Kentwood. It's going to be first and goal inside Wolf territory. Nice run by Rodriguez up the right side. Some nice blocks again from Kentwood's offensive line. And they get a first down. They were inside the 10 of South Kitsap at about the nine. It'll be first down and goal to go at the nine for Kentwood, who's huddled up, bringing in the substitution. That's what we were talking about earlier. South Kitsap had Kentwood third and, and long deep in their own uh, deep near midfield, but uh, two couple of big plays, and they get first and goal here. They're going to hand the ball off on a counter. That's Rodriguez again. He sidesteps his way, but he gets down inside the five. We're going to call it the three-yard line. Looked like he almost fumbled the ball there, but managed to hang on. They've gone to Rodriguez the last couple of times, giving Bronson a little break here, throwing another running back at South. Bronson doing a nice job at tailback for the Conquerors, but gets a little breather here. And uh, his replacement, Corey Rodriguez, the 5'7", 175-pound junior, is doing an excellent job of uh, getting some time in a tailback while Bronson gets that rest. So Kentwood is knocking on the door. It's going to be second and goal at, we'll call it the South Kitsap three-yard line. Wouldn't surprise me if they went back to Rodriguez here again. They come out in the I formation. Rodriguez, they send a man in motion. That's Patterson to the far side. Warner's going to keep it, sneak right up the middle, and he's going to get in untouched. Touchdown, Kentwood. So Warner, with the quarterback keeper, goes three yards, and Kentwood gets on the scoreboard here with just over nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Now I'm going to mention this right now, Coach. Before the kick gets off, they've got an offense guy listed as an offensive tackle with the uh, doing the place kicking duties tonight. I can't say how big of an extra point kick this is because they're. 14-13 now, if he, if he makes it, it's tied. But if he doesn't, it's trouble for Kentwood. A, a key extra point here for Kentwood. There's the snap, the kick is up, and it is good. It looked like uh, from our angle up here that he may have pulled it just a little bit, but uh, he did, and the kick is good. So with 9-19 remaining, in the game, South Kitsap and Kentwood are now tied, and uh, what do you think we might see here in the last nine minutes of this game, D-Rod? Well, I think we're gonna see uh, a lot more of what we've seen already, which is uh, which is a lot of uh, running up the gut, 
uh, pound it down your throat type of offense with the running game, which uh, Kentwood just gave us a fine example of there on that last possession, and resulting in a touchdown. I think we've got a couple of a uh, couple of big time teams here going head to head, toe to toe, and I think that it's going to come down to the last minute. I think that South Kitsap is going to stick with what they've been doing on the ground, mostly on the ground. Short passes here and there. I don't see a lot of uh, long passes. And they're going to keep it safe, keep it on the ground, and uh, hopefully get inside the 20-yard 20, 20 line, 10-yard line within a scoring range and punch it in the end zone again. Sean State and Corey Dane back to receive the kick for the Wolves, both of them standing at their own 10-yard line. South Kitsap looking to get the kick here. Kentwood squibs it up the left side. It's going to be fielded by Dame at the 20-yard line. Looks for a little bit of room. He's tripped up, taken down. We're going to call it as Dame slams his hand down because he did have a lot of room, but he was uh, shoestring tackled right there. Still get a little bit on the game. We're going to call it uh, 17. We're going to call it 18 yards on the game. On the game. And uh, South Kitsap will start at their own 38-yard line. So this is going to be good field position for the Wolves to start. What I see uh, for South Kitsap here is uh, keep it on the ground, chew up the clock, get it down as far down as they can go before they score again. That's the game plan. We'll see if they can execute it. Two wide receivers in the I formation for the Wolves. They're going to hand the ball off to Chad Fowler. He tries to get to the outside and nothing doing. Not right there. He tried to get out, but another ankle tackle there by the defensive lineman, and it is going to be a no gain, and it will be second and 10 for the Wolves. Under nine minutes to go now in this contest, and nice defensive stop there by Kentwood. Well, South Kitsap tried to, try to spread it out a little bit there with the, the run left, nothing doing. Kentwood sniffs it out, no gain on the play. It'll be second down for the Wolves. We'll see if uh, they decide to go to the air here to pick up some uh, quick yards. South Kitsap now with three wide receivers, Parker and Fowler, the near side of the field. They're gonna reverse pitch the ball, but Kentwood is not going to be fooled. That was Cedric Carter who got the ball, and uh, he tried to reverse his field of action and goes to the left side, but Kentwood stayed at home and South Kitsap got maybe two on the gain. It's going to be third and eight, so a key third down play here for the Wolves with eight minutes left in the game. Boy, is it ever. If they don't pick up the first down here, which they may not, second and nine, or third and nine, they'll have to punt and give the Conquerors back the ball. They want to try and eliminate all possibilities for Kentwood if they can, three wide receivers. Pearson under center, he's gonna drop back, he's got a man in the flat, he's got Parker, fumbles, nice sidestep, gets out, and he does, he gets the first down! What a heck of a catch by David Parker, and able to stay on his feet and get the first down, and that could be the play of the game. Nice play, obviously they practiced that quite a bit. Pearson to Parker on the near sideline, Parker evades the tackler once he gets the ball, if he doesn't do it, they're not gonna get the first down, they're punting right now. As it turns out, he picks up those couple extra yards before being knocked out of bounds. They pick up the first down. Excellent second effort from the senior, 81, David Parker. Parker ran a great route. The defender came up to tackle, and Parker used his left hand and sh uh, shook him off and got the first down. So first down for the Wolves. They're going to hand the ball off to Burlingame, and he furls his way up the middle. Nice job by Burlingame to get about halfway up. We're going to call it a gain of about five on the play, but Burlingame is down. He looked like he got twisted around, and I think he's holding his knee. And I don't know if Burles is a word, but he did burl his way up there, DB, and uh, he did a good job of it. I hope Josh is okay, number 43 for the Wolves, the junior. He's really uh, done an excellent job for the Wolves tonight on the ground, then on the defensive side. He uh, scored a touchdown earlier, the second touchdown of the game for the South Kitsap. Well, we're looking down here a little bit closer, and uh, it at first looked like it was his knee, but I don't think it's his knee. Uh, Patrick Olson is out there working on his calf, so uh, Probably more, just a cramp. more bodies cramping up out there, and that can happen. And uh, I think he's going to be okay. Olson's trying to work that out there in his calf muscles. So, but, but nice, uh, nice run on the play by by Josh Burlingame to pick up some crucial yards. Like I said, the plan: keep it on the ground, pick up some yards, keep the clock moving, and uh, 
put ourselves put South Kitsap in a good scoring position and take the lead going into the last minute or two. Oh boy, what a huge play prior to that. South Kitsap had a long third and eight and uh, Pearson threw a really nice pass out into, it was about a seven, eight yard uh, route and Parker made a nice catch and was able to catch the ball, turn up field, shrug off the defender and able to get across that first down marker. Well, he looked like an old pro the way he did shrug off that tackler and boy did he uh, pick up a big first down for South Kitsap. Josh Burlingame, number 43, the junior for the Wolves, is gonna be okay coming off the field with the trainers. And, and we're glad to see that. And that pass, uh, that pass play from uh, Pearson to Parker, I've got one word for you, coaching. Good coaching, repetition, consistency, good job. Coaching staff and players. They knew they had to get the first down and uh, they were able to do it. They completed the pass and they got that first down. So they rattled that playoff very confidently. South Kitsap comes out, it's gonna be second four. In Kentwood territory, the 44, they're gonna fake the handoff. Pearson's gonna roll to his right. He doesn't have anybody, he's looking for a man and he's just got him and he rifles it in there. Nice pass play for Pearson to, to Parker. What a great pass play, the pass is complete. Parker catches the ball, it's gonna be out of bounds at the Kentwood 23. Did Parker do a great job of keeping his feet in bounds before he caught that ball or what, DB? Excellent job from Parker. Pearson with an excellent senior quarterbacking move right there to stay alive and to rifle that ball right into Parker. He just gunned it in there. Parker holds on. First down at the 22 yard line for, of Kenwood and South Kitsap's got a first down. It's with 6.56 clock running. And the referees stopped the game with 6.54 left on the clock. Pearson made a great fake, that counter fake, and rolled to his right. And he didn't have anybody open for a minute, but Parker was able to get open around the 23 yard line and Pearson just threw a bullet right to Parker. So another great pass play and catch. Boy, did Pearson look good on that play. Nice Parker catch to from Pearson. Parker. So the Wolves come out. Fowler is in at tailback. They're gonna hand it off to Fowler and he's got a wide opening and he's gonna sidestep in. Five touchdown, South Kitsap. South Kitsap keeps it on the ground. One big pass play to Parker. A big run by Burlingame for some yards and now we've got Fowler in the end zone for a touchdown, South Kitsap. A 23 yard touchdown run by Chad Fowler. And that's really gonna help the Wolves here with 634 remaining in the contest. What a great play, but credit the offensive line for South Kitsap because Fowler looked like he wasn't even touched when he went in. I don't think he was touched and credit the, uh, the offensive line and the offense for uh, Two, uh, the two-minute drill there, getting the ball downfield. They looked like they were under, they looked like they felt like they were under pressure, but they just looked poised. South Kitsap, they're going to fake a high snap, and oh, that could be key there. South Kitsap does not convert on the extra point. It looked like a high snap. Brandon Mayfield did a good job of getting the of getting the snap, but uh, that extra point could cost them. Kentwood is going to get the ball back here, so special teams coach. Well, they, they, they did, Brandon did his best job trying to get, get, uh, keep that ball alive. It was a high snap. I don't think that was an intentional play call. I think it was a, it was a high snap, but he, they, uh, I think Mayfield thought that it maybe was a little too high, but I'll tell you what, he did a nice job of not losing his cool, got the ball and didn't lose it. And you know what, they still have the lead, so one of the strengths of South tonight has been their defense, and uh, so the defense is really gonna rev up right here. South gets that leading Kentwood 20 to 14. Uh, Kentwood can't afford to be as conservative as South gets that was on that last drive. I think they'll try to keep it on the ground as well, maybe eat up some clock on their own. If they score a touchdown and convert the extra point, they'll have the lead. However, they can't afford to go three and out, or if they can't afford to punt the ball. The last series, uh, we saw at uh, at tailback uh, was Rodriguez for Kentwood, but I'm going to imagine that Demetrius Bronson will probably come back into the game. He's had a heck of a game uh, for Kentwood at tailback tonight as uh, Quincy Lyman is going to uh, do the kicking honors here again tonight. Lyman, the kick is going to be up. It's gonna be squibbed off to the right side. They're gonna field it at the 25. They're gonna get a few yards back. Oh, what a hit. Nice hit there. That was uh, Chad Tester. 
spun him around, but uh, not until after they gained about 10 yards on the return. So Kentwood, with 6.29 left here in the game, is going to have the ball at their own 35-yard line and a key series here for the Conquerors. Well, it is going to come down to the end. There is only, there's only six and a half minutes left in the game. 20 to 14, South Kitsap. And the defense is going to have to step up here. However, let's give Kentwood some credit. They've uh, done some good things with the ball on offense tonight. They're, uh, they're going to do their best to get the ball down the field and try to put in the end zone. So Kentwood is coming out in that shotgun formation, trying to spread the Wolves out. Warner taking his time, not in a hurry. He's going to snap. They're going to fake the handoff to Bronson. He's going to keep it again and head up the middle, and he's pelted just past the 40-yard line. Nice job by Warner there. Corey, uh, Corey Dame on the tackle there, number 13 for South. That has kind of uh, fooled South a little bit here, that, that spread formation with the shotgun. The fake, the fake handoff going right, and then the quarterback ends up wide open on the left for either a run or a throw. Warner just keeping his cool. He gained about seven yards on the play. It's going to be second three for Kentwood. Warner looking very, uh, very crafty out there, keep, uh, keeping his feet and keeping his head. They're going to spread him out again. Taylor split to the far side. Warner is going to hand the ball off this time to Bronson, who gets to the outside. He's got a couple of men, but he gets Get tripped up by, uh, I didn't see the number on well, that one. And he got the first down on the play as well. He was tripped up by uh, the South Kitsap tackler. Bronson gets the first down. They move the chain. South Kitsap really needs to step it up here and keep Kentwood out of the end zone. So Kentwood picks up the first down. They have to wait for the chains to move, but once they get them set, they're going to start them again here. But we're looking for uh, the officials have stopped play here. There's 5.27 left here in the game. South Kitsap, the last touchdown, they had a 23-yard run by Chad Fowler. Looks like there's another... Looks like there's a, a another malfunction with the clock. We'll They're, get that straightened out right quick here. I think they said 534 needs to be on the clock. Fowler had a 23-yard touchdown, but the Wolves missed the extra point after the touchdown, and that could be key here. So uh, there's uh, they're trying to put some more time on the clock. And they've got it up there, 538. 538. Time is of the essence for both teams here. South trying to keep the clock moving and keep Kentwood out of the end zone. Kentwood trying to keep marching down the field and uh, punch it in the end zone with an extra point would give them the lead. Kentwood back in the I formation. Warner takes the snap. They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson. He gets a big hole, tries to get up the middle, does a little bit. A couple a of little wolves on the, on the stop right there. But uh, the important thing for the Wolves is that they're going to keep that clock running. Bronson's just picking up big yards here and there and everywhere. Uh, Renard Williams a little slow to get up there. Uh, fatigue may be a factor here at this point for the Wolves' defensive line. They've been out there a bit tonight. A few substitutions now trying to come in here and give a couple of other uh, Wolf defenders uh, a little break here. Uh, it's going to be a gain of seven on the play. Second three for Kentwood as they are now into South Kitsap territory. The ball is at the South Kitsap 46-yard line. So Kentwood coming out here. They send uh, one man to the far near side of the field. Looks That looks like Taylor. Bronson still the tailback. They're going to hand it up. Aiken, he's going to look. He's got a man down the middle. He's got the tight end, and the ball is going to be caught, and it's going to go in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Kentwood. Big time play from Kentwood. Wide open, down the middle. Everybody's looking for that option, the fake, the run. Not happening, this time it's a throw down the middle. Kentwood ties it up, and here's where that extra point comes into big time play. Kentwood with a 46 yard touchdown pass from Kevin Warner to Tyler Weinbreck, the 6'2", 210 pound junior tight end. Burlingame quickly gets off the field. A critical extra point for Kentwood right here. <laughs> There's the kick, it's blocked! The kick is blocked! Tie game, tie game. I can't believe it! South Kitsap blocked the extra point, and we are now tied at 20 apiece. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it. Either way, with or without that extra point, South Kitsap looks to go down the field to get within at least field goal range to get the lead in this game. 
4.27 left in the contest. It's tied at 20. First, South Kitsap scores a touchdown, misses the extra point. They lead 20 to 14. Kentwood marches right back down, strikes at the 46 yard touchdown pass. And then their extra point is kicked or is blocked after the touchdown. We are tied at 20. An unbelievable sequence of events here. It is going to come down to the last minute. Well, I don't think you could ask for more excitement for the first game of the high school football season. And I'll tell you what, if this is indicative of what it's going to be like all season, we're going to see some excellent football played as uh, South Kitsap and Kentwood are tied here with 427 left in the game. Kentwood just got a 46-yard touchdown pass play. And, uh, but they missed the extra point that could have put them ahead. That was the play of the game. Excellent special teams. The special teams was perking and jerking around trying to get, get the offensive line to, to come off sides. Turns out that the head games worked and they managed to squeak in there and block the extra point kick from Kentwood to keep this game knotted up. 20 to 20 with 427 left in the fourth quarter. Corey Dame and Sean Staten back to receive the kick. Wolves looking to get some pretty good field position here if they can. Everybody set and ready to go here. Both sides trying to get fired up. There's going to be a new kicker. They're going to squib it down the middle. It's going to be taken by Staten. He's going to have it at about his own 20 yard line being chased from behind. He's got a little bit of room and he's tripped up. He Boy, that's just inches, coach, inches. If those guys aren't making those shoestring ankle tackles, these guys might be running all up and down the field. A nice job from both sides, tripping up those uh, the running backs and especially the uh, special teams uh, kick returners for uh, for some tackles. Boy, just a game of inches. Staten had a little bit of room coming up the middle, but like you said, a shoestring tackle from behind from the Kentwood defender. But he still gets a nice return, about 15 yards on the return. And South Kitsap will have the ball at their own 35-yard line with 4.23 left here in the game. Tied at 20, here we go. Pearson hands the ball off to, I think that's Fowler, but not, nothing doing. He, he might have gotten a yard on the play. That'll he has be stopped, way, stopped way short. Uh, it's going to be about second and 10 for the Wolves as the uh, Kentwood defensive line gobbles and right up after the handoff. South Kitsap going with the run. Uh, we'll call it a gain of one. It's going to be a second and a long nine for South. The ball is, we're going to call it the 36-yard line of South Kitsap. Two wide receivers. Fowler's still in, but they're going to stop that play before it starts because Corey Hawkins, the senior fullback, uh, he had a full start, so they're going to scoot him back five yards. Something that the South Kitsap Wolves have been largely able to avoid the all game as the penalties however this one is untimely marches them back five yards and uh, they'll do it again second and 15. so instead of at the 35 they'll be at their own 30 yard line second 15 for the wolves we'll definitely look for the wolves to go up top here and try to put it in a, put it in the air david parker split to the near far or the near side of the field we're gonna hit, fake the handoff. Nice job by Pearson. He's gonna look for his man, but he's got nobody out there. He rolled out of the pocket. He looked like he was just throwing that one away. He didn't have anybody. Parker just sprinted down the field. Might have been a busted play there. I don't think the receivers were uh, quite where they were supposed to be on the play or uh, maybe just uh, miscommunication or whatever it was. The throw, throw that one away. Third down, 15 for the Wolves. The pass was incomplete and they are. They're going to call an intentional grounding on that play and with that penalty I believe it's also a loss of down and that's going to turn it into well that was second down so it should be third down now that's a huge penalty against the Wolves it's going to knock the ball all the way back to their own 25 yard line so South Kitsap has a third and 20 to go here that is a extra untimely costly penalty for the Wolves at this stage of the game. 314 left, tied up at 20 to 20 with and, Kentwood. And the Wolves are going to have to try and get a little something here because Kentwood probably going to try and call a timeout unless South somehow gets the first down on this. Let's look for a draw here up the middle. Pearson is going to hand the ball off to Fowler. He steps over, he gets out to the right side. He's going to stay in bounds. 
Oh, and the official actually gets tackled. They stopped the play there. I don't know if he got out of bounds or not. I didn't think that he did, but uh, apparently he did get out of bounds. I think he did get tackled out of bounds. He was pretty close. Well, South gained about 12, 13 yards back on the play, so it's going to be fourth. We're going to call it fourth and seven. I think South is going to try to play for overtime here, punt the ball. And Kentwood, will, of course, will use their remaining two timeouts to try to stop the clock and give themselves some extra plays before the end of the game. The clock is running. He did stay in bounds. Uh, DB, it's 2.48 left in the game with the clock ticking. South Kitsap has all three of their timeouts left. It's Corey Dames back to punt. He's standing at his own 25. We're going to have a stop at your play right here. And uh, Kentwood out. is calling a timeout. I don't know why they would do that right then. I'm not sure what Kentwood's doing with that timeout, but uh, they just burned another one. So well, that they, means they, were, they only have one timeout remaining. They were about to kick off. And the clock would have stopped after the kickoff, and there had been about a half minute that had already burned off the clock. Why not take the timeout at the 3.05 mark instead of the 2.38 mark? That's an extra 25 seconds, 30, 30 seconds they could have used. Not so, very good clock management. So Kentwood burns their second timeout. South Kitsap. Good, good news for South. South Kitsap had the ball with about six and a half minutes remaining, and the score was tied after both teams had scores but missed extra points and uh, looked like they were in prime position to try and do something, but they were unable to capitalize, and uh, they had to, uh, they had, they were going, they're going to kick the ball away now, so Kentwood doing a nice job of stopping the Wolves here as Kentwood sends back two people to receive the punt at the 30-yard line. Dame is now standing at about his 23-yard line. It's a good snap, and a fairly good kick. It's gonna go straight down there. It's gonna be fielded at the 30-yard line. Trying to get to the outside. Ooh. Nice defensive tackle there by South Kitsap. That's number 88, Travis Thomas. And with that timeout, that the extra timeout that Kentwood took right before the punt, that gives South just that extra little bit of advantage and then a nice kick from Dame and a nice tackle from the special teams. Got some momentum swing right there. South looking really good right now. Good position with 2.28 left in the game and still tied up, but they've got Kentwood pinned back at the 28 yard line, the 29 yard line. We'll see if they can stand them up here. And look, and look for overtime or possibly a punt. Kentwood from their own 28. They've got just under two and a half to go here. They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson, and he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Nice tackling going on right there. He's able to get forward for a couple. Big hitting going on there. A little stinger. That was number four, uh, Corey Hawkins, with the hit. He might want to check himself out of the game. I don't think he can go right now, and he's coming out. Yeah, he, he's a tough kid. He's uh, He's got to come out for probably just one play, but he'll be right back in. Replaced by number 19, Jesse Galligan. And it'll be uh, second and seven for the Conquerors. Kentwood in the I formation. They send Patterson to the near side. And nobody on the far the right side for Kentwood is Warner receiver. is going to pitch the ball to Bronson, and he's going to try and get up. He's not getting anywhere. He gets nowhere. He might get back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be about a third and eight for Kentwood. He lost the yard. The they're, clock is running. It, should, it would be running if they stop the clock. South, the South Kitsap, takes a timeout. South Kitsap is going to call a timeout here, so it's going to be third and seven. There was no gain on that play. They pitched the ball to Bronson, got out to the left hash mark, but uh, there was no way he was getting anywhere, so South Kitsap looking to have a big stop here and they might be able to get the ball back and they have actually they did take timeouts so they have two timeouts that's good left. now that's good clock management on the part of the south kids out they had all three timeouts left stop the clock uh if they you know nail down a solid third down play here uh, third third down defensive stand here they'll force a punt they could actually call another timeout after third down save themselves some more time and uh maybe get the ball back at uh, midfield say and uh, be in good position for a field goal if they can put it down about 30, 40 yards. Well, we have a really nice crowd here tonight at South Kitsap High School. Kentwood bringing a lot of fans themselves and uh, it's just a great football game here. South Kitsap and Kentwood are tied at 20 with 1.39 remaining. Kentwood has a third and long. We're gonna call it third and seven from their own 31 yard line. So a couple of big plays here. South Kitsap's uh, secondary really needs to be awake and alert here. Can't give up any more deep plays like they uh, they did on the last time. Kentwood had the ball. Kentwood going to that spread formation. Warner in the shotgun. 
They're going to hand the ball off to Bronson. Bronson cuts up the middle. He might get, no, he's not going to get it. He's going to be stopped just short of the first down. Boy, is Bronson dancing and sidestepping and up and down the field. The, the man is impressive. He comes very close to a first down. I thought he had it. The referees mark him short, and it's going to be fourth and one for Kentwood, and I believe they're going to punt. And I think South Kitsap called another timeout to stop the clock before the punt. South Kitsap burns their second timeout. Good clock management from the Wolves on defense. So with 127, it's going to be fourth and short for Kentwood. Fourth and two, we'll call it. Kentwood has the ball at their own 37-yard line, but they're going to punt the ball away. So South Kitsap will get the ball back. South Kitsap might look at a goal line formation here with one guy back to prevent a sneak for a first down from Kentwood. South Kitsap is going to send Straten or Staten and Dane back to receive this kick. South Kitsap needs to make sure that they do hold their base everywhere. They don't want to uh, give up anything unnecessary, but I don't see Kentwood trying to get too cute here. There is. There is a couple of guys off center behind the center. There is an up back for Kentwood. They're gonna have to stop the clock. It sounded like an inadvertent whistle. The clock had started. It sounded like maybe a horn in the stands that somebody blew and the Kentwood players stood up. I don't think the officials are gonna call a penalty because there was a horn. It sounds like the home field horn that we have off the scoreboard. I've heard it a couple times tonight, probably somewhere in the stands, and I imagine that that person with that horn will probably be removed. I'm not sure if that was the scoreboard or if that was from the stands, so we're gonna try this again. The kicker, hopefully the Wolves won't get a penalty. Boy, and that was a close one there. The Wolf getting off the sideline. It's a high snap, but the kick is going to be off. Staten is going to be near, and they're gonna get around it but uh, get away from that. Kentwood is going to down the ball. It's going to be at the South Kitsap 32 yard line. So with 1.16 left in the game, South Kitsap will have the ball at their own 32 and one timeout. Well, I hate to be right coach, but it's coming down to the end. And just what more would we expect from these two uh, classy quality 4A football teams in a knockdown drag out battle to the end. This may not be the, o the only time we have left in the game, 116, we may go to overtime. Let's look for a trick play or two from South Kitsap here. Kentwood has one timeout remaining as well, so clock management is going to be essential here as uh, the Wolves come out. Going to try and make something happen here. David Parker, the speedster, is split to the near side of the field. They're going to send another guy back to help cover him. They're going to look for him, and they're going to have Parker. Nice job taken out of bounds by the Kentwood defender, but uh, they're going to get a little bit on the play and uh, they're going to stop the clock as well. So good time management there. Pearson completes the pass to Parker for a three yard gain. It's going to be second and seven for the Wolves. Well, it looked like they had uh, kept the clock running. After the stop, it looked like the referee had blown him the, the play dead in bounds, but uh, maybe not. He did force him out of bounds. I'm just not sure when the referee decided that the play was dead. Time is of essence, although if they do get the first down, the chains move and the clock will stop briefly. 110 left in the game. Pearson is going to fake. He's going to roll. He's got a man and it's batted down by the lineman. The pass is going to be incomplete. Right there in his face was Tyler Weinbreck and Pearson had no chance and it's going to be third down for the Wolves. Pearson really hasn't had much chance to uh, step back or drop back and throw the ball tonight. Uh, Kentwood's defense has really been up in his face. Although I do think South Kitsap's offense focuses more along the lines of the short game, the runouts, and the throws from Pearson. He is, he is a, a quick quarterback. He's got good feet. So with 105 left, still tied at 20 south. A key play right here, third and long. We're going to call it third and seven. They have the ball at their own 36-yard line. They need a first down. South Kitsap, two wide receivers. They're going to hand the ball off to, there he goes, he's right up the middle, that's Tucker. Tucker's going to get his shoes being tackled down at the 35-yard line. Stephen Tucker with a huge gain on the play. They'll stop the clock with 57 seconds. They'll bring the players up. They'll start the clock once the ball is down and the referees and the chain gang is ready. The chain gang making their way down the sideline. 
and uh, South Kitsap's offense gets ready for the ball and the clock to start. Stephen Tucker with a huge gain. The offensive line just created a big hole. The clock is going to be briefly stopped here. Kentwood and takes their final timeout Kentwood with 53 is, seconds left. Kentwood looks a little scrambled and they didn't want any big plays to happen right now, so they're going to burn their third and final timeout. Kentwood but not underestimating South Kitsap's play call. Another big third down play. It was third and seven for the Wolves, and they got about a billion yards on the play into Kentwood territory. What a huge run. And uh, we saw that earlier. South had a big third and eight play, and Pearson hit Parker and Parker was able to get the first down, so execution on offense by the Wolves has really saved their bacon tonight. Who was that on that big run, though, DB? That was Stephen Tucker on the run nice right run. there. Nice run, nice run. Nice run by Tucker. I'm glad you, I've got you here to keep track of who's running the ball tonight. That's right. Well, I'm just watching the game. It's all those carrots I've been eating this summer. Well, it keeps those eyes healthy. Uh, beta carotene, vitamin A. Those little wolves should be eating carrots, too. It's good for you. South Kitsap has the ball in Kentwood, 37. Boy, that was a nice run. South Kitsap set themselves up in prime position here to try to manage a, a, a touchdown or maybe a squeak a, a field goal kick up through the uprights if they get some more yards here. About They need about 25 extra yards. And Foxworthy, Wittig, Cook, Welsh, and Breshawn are credited for that, that big offensive line for the Wolves. Pearson, he's going to go for a man. He's got Parker. Parker goes Oh, for a my God. Oh. No what? catch, no catch. Almost incredible. Boys. I couldn't believe it. They're having trouble with the clock. They're, they're trying to get. There is a horn somewhere, either in the audience or either we're, or that or we're having a horn malfunction where we hear a horn before the play goes on. And I'm not sure why that's happening, but it's really distracting to the players and the officials and creating confusion on the field. Pearson. Through the pass to Parker, he was around the 25-yard line. He jumped up to get it. He was unable to make the catch, but uh, the pass was incomplete. But it seemed like right before the pass, right before the play, it seemed like there was a horn sounding. If someone's in the audience thinking that that's going to help or hinder either team, they need to be removed from the football stadium. That's uh, distracting to both teams. It's done. Uh, the horn has sounded before offensive plays for both squads here in the fourth quarter. There are 48 seconds left here in the game. The incomplete pass gives the Wolves a second and 10 from the Kentwood 37 yard line. Even though that catch was out of bounds, it was a nice grab. Pearson drops back. He's got a man in the flat. The, the pass is batted down. It was intended for Parker in the flat, incomplete. It will be third and 10 for the Wolves. Boy, that uh, Kentwood defensive line has really stepped up here in the latter part of the fourth quarter. Batting down balls, getting in the face of uh, number 10, Chip Pearson, the quarterback for the Wolves, just doing an all-around stand-up job. Uh, they must have received a pep talk from the defensive line coach uh, maybe between quarters. They have really stepped it up here. South Kitsap here with a big third down play. 44 seconds remaining. This is two down territory. Even if they're not able to get into the end zone, they might be able to get within field goal range. Now they have three wide receivers. Two split to the far side. Pearson is going to hand the ball off to Tucker. He tries to get up the middle, but he's not going anywhere. He might have gotten a couple on the play. Time out, South, South, time South, South, Kitsap. South Kitsap is going to burn their third and final timeout. It's going to be fourth and six for the Wolves. Now, unless we pull Norm Johnson out of the audience to possibly kick a long field goal for the Wolves, we're going to see a fourth down play from scrimmage here. Well, the ball is at the Kentwood 33. So that would be a 50 yard field goal attempt. And I'm not sure if uh, that is within the range of our field goal kickers. So, uh, or, or even Norm Johnson, if or he even did Norm come, Johnson even if he did come out of the back, stands. that's correct. But uh, I'm gonna guess that the Wolves are gonna go for it here, and uh, this could be the ball game. They, all they need is a first down. They just need six yards. A huge play here. If they do, if they do pick up the six or more for the first down, they will move the chains, the clock will stop, and they'll move the ball. And once the, ref, the referee signaled the clock to start, then the Wolves will be ready to go. And neither team has a timeout left. Is that right, DB? That's correct. Neither, neither team has any timeouts left, so. 35.8 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this game here at Joel Knowles Field between South Kitsap and Kentwood. 
first football game of the season, and it's tied up at 20 to 20. And unless South Kitsap gets the first down, they better hope that they run out 35 seconds because the turnover of downs will give the ball to Kentwood. So here we go, folks. Fourth and six for the Wolves. They're going to run the fake. Pearson's going to roll to his right. He's looking for somebody. He's going to keep it. He shovels it and he gets it. What a play by Chip Pearson. But there is a penalty flag down. Chip Pearson with a great shovel pass. He just shoveled it forward to the tight end. I believe Jesse it. Galligan, an ineligible receiver downfield. I don't. Who was the ineligible receiver? One of the linemen coming down the field. Pearson kept the ball. Did a great job. He was going to be tackled, but he was able to shovel it to Galligan, and they were able to get the first down, but the penalty because of the offensive lineman illegally downfield. So instead of a first down, they're going to scoot the Wolves back. Do they replay the fourth down, or do they get, does that give the ball back to the Conquerors? They replay the fourth down, but instead of a first down, it's going to be fourth and 11. It was fourth and six. The clock is running, and I think they're just content to run one last play. So the Wolves have one last play in them right here. Unless they get a play out of bounds here for a first down. Pearson's going to drop back. He's going to look for a man. He's got Parker. He goes for it. Oh, it's incomplete. I can't believe it. What a play. Parker had it in him. Number seven, again, the quarterback for Kentwood in on the play. Defensively, and number six as well, Troy Romney and the quarterback, Kevin Warner, break up the pass on David Parker. He had it in his hands on the sideline. A beautiful pass, and it would have been a nice catch. Pearson had a little five-step drop, and it was a it was a nice pass by Pearson, and Parker made a very slight adjustment to catch the ball, but it was a great defensive play too, so it could have gone either way. If Parker had gone out of bounds there, we'd, uh, South Kitsap would have had the ball with about five seconds left as it is. I believe Kentwood will take a knee here with 6.3 left and go into overtime. We'll see what Kentwood does. Looks like they're gonna go for it. Warner is just gonna take a knee and that's exactly what they're gonna do. So that is going to run down the clock in regulation. The clock's, the, now the clock is running as it should have been. They still have a malfunction over in the technical booth here. And that is going to end regulation play here. And as we thought might happen, we're getting some extra bang for our buck here with it knotted up at 20. South Kitsap and Kent would go into extra minutes. And actually this will be like the NCAA version of overtime where each team gets the ball, I believe at the 25, four downs, and you get a chance to score, and you can actually pick up a first down at the 10, or at the 15, and at the five. Each play, uh, each team is going to have a chance. They will each start at their own 25, or start at the 25 yard line, and they will just play regular. They get first downs and everything, and uh, they will have a chance to score. Uh, if they don't score a touchdown, they can go for a field goal, but if they don't score, and if the other team gets the ball and scores, then the game will be over. Now, if each team scores uh, and is still tied, they go to a second overtime, and then they go to a third overtime, and in the third overtime, they are forced to go for a two-point conversion upon scoring a touchdown. So the first two overtimes, if you score a touchdown, you get to go for a point, a PAT. If uh, in the third overtime, you are forced to go for the two-pointer. You've so, been doing your research. You're ready. Well, I have been. Uh, we had to get ready for this game at short notice, so uh, I, wow. had to, I had to look that up. Wow, that's, there must be a book or something that you, you read that in. That's, that's excellent knowledge. I think that they'll go from left to right towards the scoreboard, I believe. There will be no time on the clock because it is a game of downs at this point in this type of overtime game. So it'll be the only thing that time-wise they have to worry about is the, uh, the play clock between plays. You can credit uh, you can you can credit the research team of uh, Mike Downham Enterprises uh, for giving us the the factual the fact sheets of that information. So uh, he is a he is a walking them. statistical encyclopedia. He really is. And we and we thank him. We thank him. So South gets up in Kentwood, getting ready to go here. They had a coin flip to see who will go first. Actually, they're going to they're going to have the coin flip here. This is like the start of the game where the captains come out with the officials. They're going to toss the coin, see who goes first. 
It'll be interesting to see what kind of play calling each team has here with the connection that Pearson has had to Parker here in the second half. It wouldn't surprise me one bit to see that play called at least once. Pearson really seems to have gotten his, his arm warmed up in the second half, especially when there's not a Kentwood defender right in his face, which has happened a couple of times tonight. He's seemed very poised and very prepared to throw the ball when he's been called upon. Now Kentwood doing a very solid job on the ground and outside of a 46 yard uh, touchdown pass in the uh, middle of the fourth quarter, they've really kept the ball uh, largely on the ground. And they do a pretty good job of it too. South Kitsap has had a couple of big runs on the ground to keep them alive. And uh, through an odd string of events, both teams scoring touchdowns in the fourth quarter and both teams missing extra points in the fourth quarter. After being tied at 14, now being tied at 20 apiece. Now we go into overtime, NCAA rules apply. Each team will get the ball at the 25-yard line. We're flipping the coin, uh, the coin right now to see who will go first. You'll get the possibility of two first downs total inside the 25. And each team will get uh, four opportunities off of downs to try to score a touchdown. If it goes into double overtime, same thing. And if it goes to triple overtime, as DBR has already said, then if they score a touchdown, they'll be forced to go for an extra for an extra two point conversion. Now, DB, if do they have the option to kick a field goal on, on for, or first or second or third or fourth down if they'd like? Yes, they do. You can kick it. You can kick a field goal and go for three if you'd like. If uh, what they do is that most teams will just play it out like they're regular downs, um, depending on where the ball is. Um, if they don't get past uh, the 25 yard line very much, uh, it's going to be quite a quite a longer field goal. But uh, most teams usually do. If they don't get that touchdown. They're going to go for that. They're going to go for that uh, that field goal. So either way, but if one team scores a field goal, the next team will have an opportunity to score a touchdown, and upon doing so, would win the game. So this is going to be uh, the first overtime between South Kitsap. They're going to be at the north end of Joan Ols Field. And very inconveniently, the officials have chosen to go away from the broadcast booth towards the other end of the field. It would have been nicer if they had chosen this side of the field where we could see things just a little bit better. That's right. I mean, our eagle eye vision is pretty good, but uh, for crying out loud, however, uh, it depends. Sometimes uh, uh, I believe that they'll do either one or two overtimes down at that end, and then they'll come down here to this end. Now that's just equal opportunity right there, and I, I think that's good. That's good for everybody. You bet. We like to get everybody involved, and then we'll just see about that big barbecue. Actually, there really is no barbecue. We don't really want anybody going down out on the field. So South Kitsap uh, won the toss, won the coin toss, and they uh, will get the they will get first possession at the 25-yard line. And they are coming out, it looks like, in the uh, power eye formation. One of the nice things about overtime is that there is no clock. This is, my, this is generally an advantage for the, uh, for the team that gets the, to get the ball first. They're going to hand the ball off to Fowler. He tries to get off left guard. He gains quite a bit on the play. He's going to get inside the 10-yard line. Do they start off at the 20-yard line, Coach, or the 15, or what? Because that wasn't the 25, I don't think. Boy, I thought that they started at the 25-yard line. I thought they did, too. Uh, Maybe they changed the rules for, uh, for for high school. I think it was the 20. Either that or I just didn't really know the rule, and I was just trying to sound really good. I think you sounded good, and I and I agreed with you. And I think that for high school, they just they just bump it down a little bit to, to about the 20-yard line to well, start them off. Well, they sure did as they have the ball inside the 10, and there goes Fowler. He's going to try to get outside, but he's tackled by the ankles. He gets near the five yard line. And I don't know if they'll be able to pick up first downs here. I don't, they don't have a chain gang on the field. They just have one down marker. It'll be third down. I think they get four chances to score the touchdown and, uh, and that's it. I think maybe they started them at the 10. Boy, it sure looks like they did, didn't they? You know, they? if they had been down on this side of the field, we'd be able to tell you a lot more. So South Kitsap, a couple of plays here. It's going to be third and goal for the Wolves. Parker is going to be split to the far side of the field, still in that power eye formation. Fowler in at tailback. There, oh, there's a miscue on the play. I think there was a fumble. Did South Kitsap recover? Kentwood got the ball. South Kitsap fumbled the ball on the snap exchange. And Kentwood is going to get the ball back. Kentwood can very easily bring in the field goal unit and kick a field goal and win the game. Well, I'm not really sure now on this because uh, I don't know if they have to go for it or if they have to try and kick the ball. 
but either way there was a turnover by South Kitsap on the from the quarterback center exchange Kentwood gets the ball and now they're going to have the ball at the 10 yard line so Kentwood is going to have four downs from the 10 yard line to try and get into the end zone South Kitsap missing a golden opportunity here a little confusion on Kentwood's side they come up here they've got Bronson in the back in the backfield at tailback Warner is going to hand the ball off to Bronson he's going to bounce off the outside he's going to get in that's going to be a touchdown Kentwood and Kentwood scores on their first overtime possession and that's it 26 to 20 it's the overtime that's it South Kitsap fumbles on third down and overtime on their possession Kentwood comes down the first opportunity and punches it in the end zone Bronson fittingly the uh, MVP for Kentwood tonight with uh, easily over 100 yards rushing punches it in the end zone and South Kitsap goes down to Kentwood 26 to 20 in overtime here at Joel Knowles Field in Port Orchard it's been a great game as the players line up to shake each other's hands as the uh, Kentwood fans are jubilant. What a great football game here tonight, the first game of the opener. South Kitsap loses their first game, their home opener, here at Joe Knowles Field. They lose 26-20 to to the Kentwood Conquerors in overtime. Uh, what a great game on both sides, though. Some excellent football played. Um, some Both sides making some great plays. Uh, some turnovers, some mishaps, and uh, you can't fault them. Uh, one oh, game yeah. does not a season make. Are we, and we had a great game. We knew it was going to be a great game, and we predicted it would go down to the last minute, and it did, and it actually went into overtime. Two great teams and a, and a great finish. Uh, we'd like to congratulate both teams and all the coaches, and we'd also like to thank uh, Mike Downham and the uh, SK TV News crew for uh, helping us uh, with the production here tonight for... Of S uh, first season of South Kitsap football 2006 uh, DB it's been fun tonight and uh, we'll see you next home game Central Kitsap uh, at home September 15th South Kitsap next week will travel to the Tacoma Dome to play the Lakes Lancers in the South Sound Classic so check your local listings in the news media for the next date and time for the football game well this is DB and D-Rod, thanks for joining me in the booth tonight. It's been a pleasure. South Kitsap loses their home opener 26-20 to 20 to the Kentwood Conquerors in overtime. And uh, But we'll see everybody uh, at the next home game, as you said, D-Rod, against the Central Kitsap Cougars. And thanks for listening tonight, and uh, everybody drive home safely. Good night, everybody.